Hi there, my name is Rick Jiha and I just celebrated 40 years selling real estate. I've also spent the last 27 years coaching, speaking and training and I've done something else. I've emceed hundreds of events and I'm so excited because I got chosen to emcee this incredible event, the Back to School Real Estate Expo. Now I got to tell you that hundreds of hours and the commitment by a lot of people to put this together. It's really incredible in fact how many people came up and figured out how to do things that we had no idea how to do, including putting this incredible day together. Now, I wanna mention those people. Denise Nunley from Arizona called your Phoenix social agent, and she has just been so steady and so keeping us all together and really the level-headed one. We have Adam Rosal and David Fine from the Los Angeles area who make up what we call the Real Estate Dads, an incredible team doing amazing things, both in being fathers and being real estate agents. Their technological knowledge, their ability to stay calm during uh, stressful times has been incredible and we can't thank them enough. David and Adam, I'm so grateful to have met you and to have helped put this together with you. And then last but not least, an amazing lady named Sandy Lynn Burnett from the Quad, City, Quad Cities in both Iowa and Illinois, and she's called That Broker Girl. She even has a podcast, incredible lady, really knows how to be a leader amongst leaders, and she's also been really helpful to me in particular in keeping things calm and realizing that we have deadlines to meet and all kinds of great things. I've already told you about me. I was the fifth person on the committee and uh, I was the least helpful. And I'm being dead honest. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I don't know that I would have been able to help in any way at all. So it's been a great, great project and we're so excited that today, August 20th, we're bringing it to you. Finally, the culmination of a lot of hard work. Now, the lineup of incredible speakers today and talent, oh my gosh, we are so grateful that these people gave from their heart. No money was involved, nobody got paid. It was just so that we could reach out and help the real estate community in a big way. And we all feel so good about it. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I've been, like I said, a speaker for many, many years. And one of the things we ask our audience to do is to make a decision as to what you will get out of today. It's up to you. It's up to you to decide that the learning you'll do will be momentous and that you'll take those tools and use them to change both your life and your real estate business. So we are getting ready to go. I want you to have a notepad a pen and be ready to take incredible notes. In fact, I had one of my mentors once tell me that taking notes in different colors helps you remember more carefully what you're learning. So buckle up, we're going to do an amazing day. Thanks to Rick so much for that introduction. As he said, I'm Denise Nunley with Ejiakaba Marketing. I'm your Phoenix social agent out of Phoenix, Arizona. I'm so happy that you guys are joining us. For me, who is a brand new real estate agent, uh, just licensed in March, this is a super exciting event. We have some fantastic speakers lined up for you. I know you're going to enjoy this and we've really enjoyed putting this together for you. Have an awesome expo. Hey everybody, Sandy Lynn Burnett, That Broker Girl here. I am host of That Broker Girl Real Estate Podcast. You can catch us live every Tuesday on Facebook. Uh, hey, I am so fired up that you guys are a part of this Back to School Real Estate Expo. My counterparts and I worked our butts off putting this together for you. I hope you all enjoy it and get as much out of it as we did putting into it. Thanks for tuning in. Hey everyone, I'm Dave. And I'm Adam. And we are the, the Real, Real Estate, Estate Dads. Dads. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Back to School Real Estate Expo. I'm psyched, we're psyched, hope you're psyched. We got a great list of speakers today. We're looking forward to seeing what it's all about. We had a great time putting this event together with our organization and we hope you enjoy the day. Thanks for tuning in. I am so excited to introduce our next speaker. I had the opportunity actually to meet this young lady several years ago when, uh, when you know, I didn't know who she was, she didn't really know who I was, we got to talking, we hit it off pretty well. I was there talking about DISC and behavior in Michigan. And we have stayed in touch since, and it's been great. I've just watched her skyrocket her career through social media. Her name is Gogo Bethke, she is from Michigan, but not originally, and I don't wanna to say too much more than that because it'll take away her story. I love listening to her. She speaks fast and it's filled with lots of great content. So I hope you're ready. Get out your pen, your pad, and remember, she's going to take your breath away. Go, go, take it away. Hey guys, 
My name is Gogo Batki. I am so excited to be here today. So thank you so much for having me at the Back to School Real Estate Expo. Today, I'm going to talk about the importance of social media, about building a brand, having your own brand that leads generates for you 24 seven. You make a post one time and that brings you in sellers and buyer leads for the rest of your life. So my name is Gogo Batki. I'll tell you a little bit about me. You can find me on Gogo's Real Estate um, anywhere uh, or under my name, Gogo Batki, if you plug it in on Instagram or Facebook. I came to this country, you can hear it on my accent, in 2003. I don't have, still to the date, anybody that's related to me. Sorry, there's a hair on my face. Uh, that's related to me in my bloodline unless they are my own children on this whole continent. So let that sink in for a minute. I barely spoke English when I came here. I was 21 years old. I thought I spoke English, but oh God, I didn't. Um, I'm in an area called Pinkley, Michigan. Literally, it's so small, you're probably not even going to find it on the maps. And I'm considered a top 3% producer in the nation. And that's because I, well, I figured out what's working for me. So I can also tell you a little bit about my personality. When I got my license, I went into the top producer's offices in the brokerage and I joined and I interviewed them. I asked, hey, what are you doing that is helping you to achieve these numbers? And they would tell me that they're cold call every day from 8 to 11.30 or they're door knock every weekend or they are doing this or they are spending thousands of dollars on farmings or they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on Zillow leads. And I realized, that, hold on a minute, it takes money to make money, which I didn't have at the time. I had about six bucks to my name. And also there was a lot of things on that list and I was not willing to do. I don't care. I'd rather take a night shift to Taco Bell on Christmas Eve before I would freaking cold call someone. It is against my religion. I can absolutely not do it. If that's what you do and that's your cup of tea and social media is very not comfortable for you, then you can skip this training <laughs> altogether. But that's how I made my money. So then I figured out, okay, here's a list of things that I'm not willing to do or I can afford. And so that left me with what? Social media, because I also don't have or didn't have at the time a sphere of influence, um, which I don't have college friends. I don't have high school friends, the kids that I grew up on the same street with. I don't have a pool of people that I can tap into. I was 21 when I moved here and my whole family is back in Romania. So that left me with social media. I figured I have to figure out how to get strangers to work with me and at the time, Social media was the only platform where I could reach strangers. And that's how the madness started. I started with Facebook originally and now Instagram. And again, you can find me on either one of these platforms under GoGo's GOGOS Real Estate. Uh, originally, I just posted everything that you can possibly think of just to kind of get some momentum. I pretty, pretty much took, the eight, uh, took the, my followers on a ride of what's going on in my life. Like how is a brand new agent going to get to the point to be a top producer? I am so sorry, but there is like a hair on my face somewhere. Okay, so let's go through that. So I prepared, uh, I have a cheat sheet right there uh, behind you. So when you see my eyes going there, just because I want to make sure to cover as much as I can in the time that I have with you guys. So the very first straight thing, I want you to like knock it in there in your head. You are your brand. Okay, it's not the brokerage, it's not the team name, it's not the so-and-so, it is you. You are the one that's going to generate those leads, you are most of the time. You are the one that's going to work those leads, you are the ones that's going to get the credit and the pat on the back and all of the awards in the end of the year. And it is your hard work and it's your effort and it's your hustle and it's your work ethic that is going to take that cold lead into a closed transaction. And in between, you are the one that you need to let the world know that this is who you are, this is what you do, and why on earth they should choose to work with you. So that's what I call shameless self-promotion. You have to be okay with promoting yourself, guys. If you see my name is in my brand, Everything that I do, this says Team GoGo because I'm an EXP agent and at EXP, everybody that joins to uh, the company with me, that, that joined group, it's called Team GoGo. So as you can see, my name is GoGo, so that's in the name. So your name on social media, your yard signs, your, you name it, your, your business cards, your email signature, everywhere you have to have your name. So most importantly, figure out who you are, what is your brand. After that, you're gonna build everything around that. You're gonna buy the .com, you're gonna go on Instagram and save the name, you're gonna go on Facebook and save the name, you're gonna link those accounts together, but I'm getting ahead of myself here, so I'm gonna go back to let's talk about the basics on your social media profile, okay? I want your social media profile to answer, I found it! I found it. Oh my gosh, it was annoying. I found it here. Okay, let's get to <laughs> let's get to the point. Okay. On social media, you have your name, so I want your profiles on all of these platforms to answer these four questions. Who you are, 
That's your name again. So you already have that figured out. That is your brand. Mine is Gogo's Real Estate. What you do, I'm a realtor and that's a hashtag realtor. You can also go to my bio and see how mine is set up and go over there and pretty much just copy it and plug it into yours. I don't care. Make sure there's a hashtag before realtor. Because on Instagram, for example, you can actually follow a hashtag. So if I follow the hashtag Realtor, or if you follow the hashtag Realtor, my posts are more than likely going to show up in your feed because not only then I hashtag Realtor in every single post, but I also have the word Realtor hashtag in my bio. So who you are, your name, what you do, Realtor. Third question, where you do it, the area that you cover. So if you go on mine, you'll see it's hashtag Michigan. And how can I get a hold of you? So your contact button better be filled out with your personal cell phone number or the one that you're actually going to answer. Emphasizing you are going to answer because they're not, if you don't answer, guess what? They're going to call somebody else who will. You better, if you're a realtor, you better answer your phones. Okay? So that's the simple part about uh, your bio. Then I want this to be a business page. So on Instagram, you're going to create a business page, or if you already have a personal page that you want to use that, you're going to turn it into a business page or just create a brand new one. I can go into the personal versus business question because some of you are like, oh, but I have 2,000 followers. Should I keep my personal? Nope. Because your mom, your cousin didn't got the great idea of you becoming a realtor, nor do they want to know the next house that just came on the market. They're following you on your personal because they love you as a human being, as a person. So don't force a real estate down in their throat. You're going to create a business page and then you're going to go back, post a couple of things, share a couple of things from your business account and invite everybody over very kindly to come and love and support your business profile as well. So you're going to have a business page on Instagram. You're going to have a business page on Facebook. And then you're going to link the two together because it's about working smarter and not harder. Okay. I want you to do one post and kill two birds with it. Meaning I usually post on Instagram and automatically feed it over to Facebook, but you can also post on Facebook and automatically feed it over to Instagram, just whichever platform you feel most comfortable with. So the way I do it, I make every single post and I try to respond to every single DM and every single comment when I have a minute. So I make the post on Instagram that automatically feeds it over to Facebook. Now the two platforms are a little bit different from one another. On Instagram, I can be on the beach and talking about this is my office for the day and I can be in a bathing suit with my this hanging out but on Facebook really not profile really not professional and on LinkedIn absolutely not so you have to understand how you fit in to these different platforms so when you're posting on Instagram it will ask you do you want to feed this over to Facebook so if I'm in my bathing suit on the beach with my tadas hanging out then that is not going to make it to Facebook and it's certainly not going to make it to LinkedIn but if it's a very professional post with let's say an interior design photo or something like that it would fit all three profiles so you want to research these profiles and see where you personally would fit in. And then you're just going to, uh, what do they say? Kill two birds with one stone. You're going to post on one platform, automatically feed it over to the other. Now, LinkedIn, as of now, as I'm creating this video, you cannot link LinkedIn together with Facebook and Instagram, but maybe one day we can. Until then, the way I do it, I have a virtual assistant that literally goes to my profile and takes everything I post from Instagram and automatically posts it for me on LinkedIn. So you can also do that or just get into the habit of open your LinkedIn app, post a photo, post a blah, blah, blah. I usually copy it uh, from Instagram and paste it onto LinkedIn. You get it done in three minutes. That way you hit all three profiles. No matter where somebody is following you, they will always see your posts. Now, one of the cool tips that you can get done today on your Facebook, did you know that your business profile on Facebook Facebook, you can actually link your calendar to it. You can create events where buyers and sellers can reach out to you and they will get access to your calendar and they can literally plug themselves right into your calendar for a listing appointment or a buy side appointment. It also links or syncs, I should say, with your actual calendar. So if you already have a 6 p.m. on Wednesday, they're not going to be able to book you for 6 p.m. on Wednesday. You're going to have to pick another time. So make sure you log into your business profile on Facebook, you update your bio, and you link your calendars because it's going to be so easy. And I can tell you the feeling when you wake up the next morning and you have a listing appointment that somebody just plugged themselves into, you're like, shut the front door. It is so exciting. So make sure you get that done. 
Oh, so you should have a buyer's and seller's guide. We use Keeping Current Matters. Uh, again, Keeping Current Matters. It is a membership-based site. I want to say it's $24.99 a month, but it's worth every penny. Quarterly or so, they come out, and don't quote me on this, might be monthly or quarterly. I want to say it's quarterly. Uh, they come out with a buyer's and seller's guide that are literally pre-designed, and all you need to do is plug your marketing in the bottom, and it looks very, very professional. You can turn it into a lead generation magnet, so you can literally post it on Facebook and say, who wants a free seller's guide? If you're thinking about selling, here's our guide, and I recommend um, that's what's going on in the current market, and then they have to give you the email address and phone number to receive the guide. We just got a lead. So you can turn those into lead magnets. We also put those into our presentation when we are going into a buy site or seller's presentation. We can have it built into our site, which is actually built into our uh, gogosrealestateteam.com. So if you go onto our KV course site, again, it's gogosrealestateteam.com. You can see those guides on there as well. It's free guides. Uh, and again, you can market it to yourself. So it looks like something that you came up with and it's so worth it. Also, keeping current matters, it's a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the real estate market so you can keep your eyes on the market and stay uh, as the expert by educating yourself of everything that's going on. It's so worth a membership. I don't work for them, by the way. Uh, I just like to use it. Now that we are in this whole COVID situation and sometimes we can do open houses and then we can do open houses and then we can do open houses, virtual tours are one of the best things you can do. Uh, what we have been doing during COVID while Michigan was totally shut down is that we literally asked our sellers if they would feel comfortable hopping on a Zoom call with the buyer. So then all four people were on the call. So the buyer's agent, um, the buyers, the listing agent, and our sellers. So then we would all go on to a Zoom call where the seller literally walks through the property, shows everything um, that is going um, that is going on, can answer questions right there. So you can do things like that. Also, you can schedule yourself an appointment if your state allows you to be physically present in the property and go live. Do virtual tours, guys, all the time because sometimes people, especially during COVID, they don't really want to enter someone's home. But if you could go through the property for them and then post it on your social media, there you go. They get a two-dimensional feel for the property. Now they can smell the cat's piss, excuse my friend. So if that's going on or smoke is going on, please be honest and share those thoughts uh, with the potential buyer. But other than that, it will save them a trip. And then maybe they say, okay, we really like it. I think we want to schedule an appointment in person. So make sure to do virtual tours because they absolutely work. Algorithm. Now Facebook and Instagram algorithm, they change all the time. I swear they change it every five minutes. So you have to stay active and on top of it, you might be able just to Google, uh, hey, what's new on Instagram right now? What's new on Facebook right now? And then just read through it so you can be up to date. But the more you use it, the more you use the features of the swipe ups and the lives and the stories and the feed posts and things like that, the more you get comfortable with it. And then you automatically just see when a change has happened because you're like, Hold on a minute. It didn't look like this yesterday. What's going on? So you always have to stay top, uh, top, uh, on top of it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, we talked about linking your accounts together. Oh, let's talk about Google My Business. Guys, if you don't exist on Google, front page, front and center, right on top, you don't exist to the millennials. Okay. So Google My Business, you have to get it done. Um, it's very simple. Literally Google, how do I create a Google My Business account? That's all you need to do. Okay, you're gonna get that done. Now, on there, as soon as it's done, it's gonna take you a couple weeks because you're gonna have to actually um, have it approved by Google. They're going to mail you, believe it or not, a snail mail style postcard that's going to have a code on there, four to six digits. You have to wait to receive that code, to enter that code, to confirm your business on Google, and then you are official. Then you can start collecting reviews. The more reviews you have on the Google My Business page, the more, uh, the higher you show up on the front page of Google My Business, and that's your goal. You want to show up right on top when somebody's searching for Brighton, Michigan realtor or whatever, whatever you are at. Um, and the reviews and feedbacks are so, so, so important. So you want to get that done. Ours is automatically, it's a step when we're processing our files that they get a text message. They also get an email with all of our links and some of the links that we use that are, in my opinion, are important to have free reviews on is Zillow. Even though I don't buy Zillow leads, I think a lot of buyers and sellers find themselves on Zillow and they're going to look for an agent and I want myself to show up right there front and center right on top of the list and for that I collect Zillow reviews. Uh, you are just going to go onto your Zillow profile right in there. You're going to, if you don't have one, you have to create a professional profile, not a 
bio or seller profile, okay? So you're gonna create a professional profile, it's gonna ask you for your agent ID, the MLS that you belong to, you answer all of those questions, you create your profile, then you upload your photo, you upload your brand, your phone number, your email address, your website, da 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 then you can start collecting reviews and you want that. So when you are sending out your final text message or your final email after you close and you say, oh my gosh, I love working with you, I had a five-star experience, I hope you had the same, would you pretty please take five minutes of your time and fill out this review because my business is worth your out and I hope you enjoyed working with me as much as, much as I enjoyed working with you. And then you're gonna send them those links, they're gonna fill it out, and suddenly you pop up on the first page of Google, all of the everything that you need to happen, your Zillow's, your Realtor that comes with truly as your own uh, Facebook page, it's happening. So we are doing Facebook um, for, for reviews, we are doing Facebook, we are doing Zillow, and we are doing Google My Business. Those are the three that I personally like to use to collect my reviews. You can also ask for video reviews. Those are amazing. So instead of somebody just typing up the blah, 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 how much they love working with you, imagine if they did that selfie style where they just shoot a quick two minute video and they are going to send it over to you. Now you are going to plaster that everywhere because Jessica might work with you if Erica worked with you. Because if Erica worked with you, there is such a thing that's called FOMO. Have you heard of it? Fear of missing out. So the more people work with you, the more people want to work with you. It's that simple. In order to do that, you have to have what? Shameless self-promotion. You're gonna take that video that your client did about you and you're gonna plaster it everywhere. You're gonna send it out in emails. You're gonna text it to your potential future clients that haven't decided to work with you yet. You're gonna put it on your Facebook. You're gonna share that to your personal Facebook page. You're gonna put it on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and you name it, you're gonna plaster it, whatever idea you could think of, you're gonna send it everywhere. Why should somebody work with you? Um, what can else I can talk to you guys about? Um, oh, on Zillow, when you do your transactions, I don't know if you knew that, but on the buy side, you actually have to claim your transactions. So Zillow tracks your transactions, but sometimes the listing agents are smart enough to actually claim your side as well. So you're going to have to log back in. So if nothing else, go through your past, uh, your production, go through every single transaction, go to Zillow, plug in the address and claim that, that you were actually the one who sold that transaction on the buy side. So when uh, potential buyers and sellers looking you up, they can actually see that you sell a lot of real estate. Because if not, the other agent who was on the listing side might have claimed yours and now they look like they sell a lot of real estate even though you sold it on the buy side. So I hope this helps, guys. I tried to squeeze in as much as I can here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Have a wonderful 2020. You better have social media presence because if you don't have it, you do not exist for the uh, millennials. And you can find me on Gogo's Real Estate. If I can ever answer you, if I can ever help you with anything, DM me and I try to answer you as quick as I can. Bye guys, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, wasn't that amazing? Okay, I gotta tell you, I was scribbling notes as fast as I could and uh, I don't know about you, but <laughs> the whole thing about the hair in the face and trying to get it off her face, that was just great that she just, she didn't stop, she just kept going and it was so authentic and vulnerable and real. Now, let's get to the talking part. Did you take notes on that? Because there was some amazing stuff there. Now, there was some funny stuff in there too, like when she talked about, you know, being on the beach with your tatas exposed. I mean, that was really hilarious, but there was an amazing point in there, right? About the difference between posting on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn and, and the professionalism that shows up. So I gotta tell you, it was great for me. I hope you got a lot out of it. And Gogo, -Go, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for contributing your time and energy to us today. It was incredible, thank you. All right, I'm so excited about our next speaker and I know I keep saying that over and over again, but all of these people are really incredible, let's, let's be honest. The next speaker is Michael J. Mayer. Now, I gotta tell you, I remember the first time I saw him on stage. It was at a Keller Williams Realty event many, many years ago. And it was before he'd actually, no, I think it was right after he'd written his book, The Seven Levels of Communication. And I've been admiring him ever since. He has a company now called Referco. And I gotta tell you, you've gotta follow this gentleman because everything that comes out of his mouth is brilliance, especially as it relates to you improving your real estate business. So. Let's stay tuned for another amazing talk from Mr. Michael J. Mayer. Welcome back to school. We're all going to back to school, whatever that may look like, virtual, in person, whatever it may be. But today you're back in school here with us today. And I appreciate your being here. And in going back to school, it really reminded me of what was the biggest lesson that my son, my 11 year old son, learned last year in school. And it's interesting that it wasn't necessarily something he learned in a class or learned from a teacher. 
you know, he started out the school year with, uh, he had a couple of behavior issues, uh, new teacher, new requirements, uh, new classroom, new school for Max. And they have this clip up method, which is there is the red clip, which is you're in trouble, principal, not good. The yellow is a warning. The green is a go, which means you're having a, a good day or a normal day. And then also there was a purple clip and a purple clip is basically you're doing everything right. So what we did is it's like, okay, he got a couple of yellow clips and it's like, well, we got to make sure we don't get it red. And we had a conversation, my son and I, his name is Max. Max and I had a conversation and it was just like, well, you know, you don't want to get yellow. You don't want to have that reputation of being a yellow or a red or whatever it may be. What's it take to get a green? And he goes, well, I think I know what it takes to green. And then I go, well, is there anybody in the class who's gotten purple? And he's like, yeah, this one boy got purple. And I go, that's interesting. So what could we do here? And after a few seconds, he said, you know what? I'm going to watch what Jeffrey does and see why he got purple. You know, I just thought it was the teacher liked him or something, but I'll, I'll, know, I'll just be aware of what he does. So he goes back to school on Monday and he comes back and he has a green and he's like, you know what? I got a green today. And I think it was because I did a lot of the things that Jeffrey did. And it's like, okay, what did he do? Well, he basically listened to the teacher. He was quiet a lot. And uh, when we had to line up, he got in line and, and really didn't mess with anybody and, and that kind of thing. It's like, okay. Well, Tuesday comes and we pick him up from school and Max Mayer has the biggest smile on his face, the big cheese ball smile. And Max Mayer had gotten purple. He had clipped up is what it's called instead of clipping down. And he clipped up the purple, and guess what? He learned what it took, and he observed from this 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 other boy uh, what it took to do purple. And I asked him about it. It's like you know he he basically just you know did what the teacher said and and helped when he could, and and kind of even asked to help at times. And I started asking to help as well, and uh, I got purple. So he got purple on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Thursday and Friday he was back down to green. It, it's hard to get purple. And we started talking through the weekend and was like, well, you know, what's your goal for the next week? He goes, dad, I want to get a whole week of purple. Well, he went back and he did a whole week of purple. And he was like, dad, I had the best week ever. Well, what made that happen? What made that happen is learning from those who are successful. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. My name is Michael J. Mayer international bestseller of 7L, the seven levels of communication. And it's one of those where I also wrote a good book called The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents that has been uh, also a, a bestseller for quite some time. And it's like, what could I help you with, with going back to school that would help you maybe not just have the best week ever, but have the best finish ever to your year? And the thing that we love about school is that it gives our kids structure. And we as humans crave structure. So how do we take the combination of we want uh, to do what the successful do with structure? And the answer to that is rituals. It's rituals. So I'm going to give you three rituals, call them life hacks of the super successful uh, you know, rituals of super producers, but these are combining the habits of super successful people so that we can finish strong. Now, the first one is the Sunday night ritual. I'm going to give you the Sunday night ritual, the nightly ritual, and then I'm going to give you the morning ritual. The Sunday night ritual comes first because it is a weekly preview. It is a way to look at the week and uh, plan ahead. So the acronym, I'm going to give you three acronyms. The Sunday night ritual is SWEET. Now, SWEET, the S of SWEET is schedule. On Sunday night, anywhere between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m., you can look at your schedule for the week ahead, and you're going to see what the appointments are. 
you're going to maybe notice drive time that need you can maybe stack appointments. You may be able to stack to dos. You might be in a certain neighborhood putting out a sign, and you could also you know drop a gift off at a at a past client's house, whatever it may be. You can start to look at your week and become a little bit more efficient and a little bit more productive. Whether you're looking at your schedule on paper, Googled, calendar, you know, the phone, whatever it may be, look at your schedule for the week. Also, you're going to look at your family's schedule and also, you know, kids' schedule. Maybe if there are other people, a staff uh, or other people that uh, you're responsible for, then you're going to look at their schedule as well. The W is for weather. You're look. You're going to look at the weather for the week so that you can plan accordingly. My son is 11. He plays football. He plays basketball. He plays baseball. During football and baseball season, guess what? Weather is going to be a factor. If you're going to get a rain out, you got to make other plans. Uh, here's the other thing: is I will tell you as a side note, uh, we go on vacation. We'll go to Jamaica or Aruba or whatever it may be, and we'll just take a quick glance at the weather and make our plans accordingly. We just did this in Aruba and this last year. And we, so it's like Wednesday and Friday were supposed to rain. So we did our outdoor activities like riding sea dews and, and my son got to hold this gigantic starfish, which was really cool. Uh, we saw a shark, we saw dolphins. Um, it was very cool. And then Tuesday we went fishing, right? You got to sign up for these at the beginning of the week. And then we went fishing on Tuesday. We caught a sailfish and we caught a king mackerel and uh, two biggest fish of my life. And then Wednesday, we did indoor activities, which uh, Sherry, my wife, and my son Max did, you know, some indoor activities. We kind of just did a lot of nothing. Thursday, we went back out and I did a, uh, I did, uh, what is that called when you go up like parasail? Is that what it's called? Uh, basically they dragged me behind a boat with a, with a parachute on above me, but it was actually really cool. You could see a lot of cool things. I saw, uh, I actually saw a school speaking of back to school of sea rays, like the sea rays, you know, uh, that was very cool. And, and then Friday we did some more indoor activity. And then on Sunday we, we headed home, but I will tell you on Friday we were doing the indoor, there were kids crying, there were parents upset because their fishing excursion and their sea dew time had been canceled because of rain. So looking at the weather can be a very, very powerful proactive device. Now, the E is eating plan. You're gonna look at your eating plan for the week. Many people that go through our course, Sweet Dreams, you can check out more on that at 30evenings.com, 30evenings, E-V-E-N-I-N-G-S.com. Uh, they will literally make all of their meals on Sunday, put it in the refrigerator, and they've got their entire meal plan for the week. You don't have to be as scientific as that as you want, uh, as you if you want, if you don't want. But the thing about it is, have an eating plan. You're going to eat healthier. You're going to save money. You're going to make less decisions about food. It's not going to be what do you want tonight? What do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want to eat? The next E is exercise plan. What's your exercise plan for the week? Now, for me, it's very simple. I, I do a long walk and listen to podcasts or audiobooks as part of my exercise plan. It's very easy. Shorts, t-shirt, and, uh, and walking shoes, basically. Uh, but some people who are in Sweet Dreams, they get very, very precise with their workout plan, including you know how many sets they're going to do, how many reps they're going to do, and at what weight. Um, and they even have the specific time that they're going to do these things. So you can be as detailed as you want with your exercise plan, but we have to all agree. We should all have an eating plan and an exercise plan. So the time to do that is Sunday night. It allows us to do it with no pressure on us. And uh, we're making those decisions beforehand instead of at the last second. The T is for tie it all together with your to do. So one of those is to... Uh, for us, we believe in laying your outfits out for the entire week. So in my closet, I have hung up like what I'm going to wear each and every day. My workout outfits, basically short and t-shirt, socks and shoes are uh, on the shelf. And what I'm going to wear that day are organized in the closet. My son hangs his outfits 
over the banister that's right outside his bedroom. So however you organize it, you can, uh, but you wanna tie it all together. Use the knowledge that you've gotten from your schedule, from the weather, from your eating plan and your exercise plan and do the action items, do the to-dos so that you're weak. You are, I will tell you what people tell me in Sweet Dreams. They've never felt so prepared for a week than when they've been in Sweet Dreams and do their Sunday night ritual. Now, the nightly ritual, okay? The nightly ritual is dreams, which makes sense. So dreams is the acronym and the D is for dim time. And dim time is actually a whole dim time ritual within a ritual. The dim time is what time are you going to begin getting ready for bed? So if, you're, if you wanna be at sleep at 10, your dim time might be 9.30 or it might be nine, but you want to establish a dim time, especially in today's environment. The more structure you can give yourself, they, they found out so much research on if you go to bed at the same time every night, you will be healthier, you will be wealthier, and you will be happier. That's all you got to do is go to bed at the same time every night. And that would be my one real solid action item that I would, I would ask of all of you is to establish what time. If it's 11 p.m., it's 11 p.m. If it's 10, it's great. If it's 1 a.m., then it's great. But establish a set time to get ready for bed and to hopefully be asleep. Uh, that's a very that's been a huge game changer for me. Dim time ritual includes getting rid of technology, turning your phone off. It's going to be turning the lights down. It's going to be your bedtime ritual, uh, like your bathroom ritual. It can be you know washing your face. We have people in Sweet Dreams who literally hot tub with Epsom salt followed by a sauna. You know, there's a lot of these bedtime rituals. Essential oils can be a part of it. You know, sounds, music can be a part of it. Whatever it may be for you, uh, that is part of your dim time ritual. And then you put on your pajamas and then you go to the R, which is read. At night, I don't believe that you should read very much. Uh, five minutes, 10 minutes at the most. Uh, also, uh, unlike the morning ritual, I believe that you should uh, read fiction or read stories uh, as much as you read nonfiction at night. I'm a real believer in reading fiction at night. I think it, it triggers your imagination uh, and helps you have sweeter dreams, if you will. Uh, so read, and then the E is for evaluate. You know, I built an entire journal, you know, for you to write in and evaluate and celebrate your evening. It, it's been proven that you will sleep better. You will have solutions to your problems when you wake up. If you can incorporate evaluation and celebration into your nightly routine, and the best way to do that is to write it down in a journal. So E is for evaluate. The A is for affirm. So affirmations. I have a, a, a wonderful bedtime affirmation uh, that I have created, and I give it to everybody in Sweet Dreams. The bedtime affirmation is just simply preparing your mind to utilize the power of sleep. There is a power in sleep. We sleep a third of our lives. So what if we could tap into that and make ourselves more productive, healthier, wealthier, and happier by just getting better sleep? The M is for meditation. And this is simply just breathing techniques and breathing into uh, your pillow, if you will, kind of breathing uh, and, and getting your uh, breathing in sync. And then the S is for sleep. So dreams is the nightly ritual, dim time, reading, evaluate, affirm, meditate, and then sleep. So that's the nightly ritual. The Sunday night ritual is sweet. The nightly ritual is dreams. We have put those two things together for a course called Sweet Dreams. And uh, you can check out more on that at 30evenings.com. Now, the other class that I like to talk about is our 30 mornings class. And these are 30-day challenge courses where we literally coach you for 30 days. That's right. Every day for 30 days, you have a coach. And in some cases, it's me. In some cases, it's even better. You get a certified night coach or a certified morning coach. No matter what, you get a certified rituals coach. Uh, on doing what we do with 30 Mornings and Sweet Dreams. 
30 Mornings, you can check out more at 30mornings.com. This is uh, the Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents system with kind of some tweaks to it. The, the acronym for 30 Mornings is SAVERS. The S is SILENCE, which is for quiet time, meditation, prayer. As soon as you wake up, just take some time to yourself. Get away. I will tell you, this can be a game changer by itself. And then you're going to go into the two A's. There's actually two A's in SAVERS. It's affirm and appreciate. So you want to write out your affirmations. You want to recite and read out loud your affirmations. Affirmations are simply I am positive statements to yourself. You know, I am a best-selling author. I am an international best-selling author. Uh, I am healthy, wealthy, and happy. I am, you know, whatever it may be. And then appreciations are I appreciate blank because blank. So I appreciate coffee because it gives me energy or I appreciate water because it hydrates me and it's kind of the oil to my car and helps me move more efficiently. Visualization is the V, S-A-A-V, visualization is the V. Visualize your day, visualize your achieving your dreams, visualize you, you accomplishing your goals. Visualization is very powerful. Uh, visual, you wanna visualize your day in its ideal environment and always kind of think of like, what could be even better? You know, what is, what is the greatest and then, or something better? Then exercise is the E and then the R is for read. And I will tell you, this is a big one for me. The exercise for me is a long walk in the morning and the read is actually a podcast and audiobooks that I listen to while I take my long walk. So I do combine the E and the R in my morning ritual. And then the S is for scribe or scribble. And that is for going back to journaling. Uh, I created a nice, thick, wonderful 30 mornings journal that you get when you take 30 mornings. And people have printed these out for every 30 days, for every month of their of their year and uh, implement the, the morning ritual every single day. So the, the big thing is to learn by what others do, not necessarily by what they say. Like my son, you can learn from others, learn from the more successful, and then implement those things that the successful do. And guess what? You too will be more successful. And I know a lot of you are already very successful, and I appreciate your paying attention. I don't know if you'll consider 30mornings.com or 30evenings.com. We'd love to have you in 30 mornings and sweet dreams. But the bottom line is, is I hope and I wish for you to get as much structure when it comes to back to school as possible. And uh, I also want to get a, a big shout out to Rick. Rick, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for all you do for the real estate industry and the business uh, environment as a whole. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here today. And uh, I hope I hope that uh, everybody gets at least one or two things out of the day that improves their life. And I wish all of you awesome health, awesome wealth, and true happiness. So thanks, everybody. Oh, my gosh. Wasn't that wonderful? Okay, so the first thing that came to my mind as he ended the talk was sweet dreams, baby. That was incredible. And I hope you took notes on it because I, I listened to all of the letters in sweet dreams and what they all stood for and how I could start changing my outcomes by using them. Michael, I gotta tell you, it was incredible. And we are so grateful that you gave time out of the goodness of your heart so that we can make today happen. Everybody else, make sure you follow him, get on his, on his website, because I promise you anything you can do with Michael will help increase your business and make a difference in your life. Thanks so much, Michael. I'm actually really happy and honored to be the gentleman who gets to introduce our next speaker, and I'll tell you why. I'm a coach for Workman Success Systems, and that really had nothing to do with my involvement in today, and it just so happened they said, Rick, who do you think would be a great speaker? And of course, I thought of Verl Workman. He is the founder of Workman Success Systems, and for over 30 years, he's been delivering amazing information and, and coming out of his mouth in such a brilliant way to real estate agents and the real estate community. Now, 
Burl is a member of the National Speakers Association, but he's more than a member. He's also got one of their highest honors, which is called CSP, Certified Speaking Professional. And I gotta tell you, he is incredible on stage. And I've, I've watched him speak many, many times over the last five years and have been very honored and excited to be involved in his company. Now, today's talk is going to be something that I think can be dramatically life-changing for you as you start to build a leveraged real estate business. And you might say, leveraged? Heck, I'm working my butt off. Yes, you must work your butt off and you must move from step to step so that you can build a real estate business that's leveraged. And Verl is the master at explaining how to do that. So put your hands together, get your notepad out and your pen ready for Mr. Verl Workman. Well, thanks, Rick. I appreciate the warm introduction and the enthusiasm from the group. Anytime I know you're involved in something, I know it's going to be epic. Well, today I've been asked to talk about how to build your A team and what that really means. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to give you tools, systems, resources, and thought processes on the way that we think, operate, and build some of the most successful teams in the world at Workman Success Systems. And so I'm going to do that, but as I do it, I'm going to give you a tremendous amount of resources and things that you're going to want to have access to. So everybody take a picture of this screen right here. And it's in order to get the downloads, the things that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to just give you a bunch of free resources. Take a picture of this and I'll make them available to you. It's workmansuccess.com forward slash exp20. Everybody got that? All right, take your picture, grab the screenshot, and now let's just get into it. You know, people ask me why and when do we start a team? So what goes on in your life that makes you start thinking about, do I need leverage? The one thing that everybody looks for is more time. So I'm going to kind of break down the, the different levels of business that we have and what it looks like when we add different resources and different team members. You know, an agent doing one to 10 transactions, I call that a good agent. Uh, one a an agent comes in, they're not really working full time, they're part time in the business, they're doing one to 10 transactions a year. It's not even one a month, so they have a tremendous amount of time, they're doing a friends and family business. That one to 10 agent is a uh, good business, it's a good side business, and you can make a decent income doing that depending on your sales price. When you start getting past 10 and you move into that 10 to 20 range, you start realizing that, you know, I can make some serious money in this business. And you start be getting better at the business. You do more transactions, you get better at it. In that 10 to 20 phase, you start realizing that real estate can be time sucking. What happens in the 10 to 20 phase is that you do a lot of the business in, the, in, in seasonal markets, like spring and fall markets, for example. And so you might have five or six transactions all going on at the same time. And during those peak times, you start having this feeling of overwhelmed. You stop going to your kids' practices, or when you're present, you're there but you're actually on the phone all the time. You're not actually present in the interaction. So what happens is you start making compromises. You say yes to one thing by saying no to something else because you're doing it for the benefit of the family. It's in this phase that we start thinking about maybe it's time that I should get a transaction coordinator or someone to help me with the paperwork or someone to do the marketing and the miscellaneous administrative tasks. And it's okay to think that way. As a matter of fact, I believe that if you start here and this is when you hire your first part-time assistant or transaction coordinator, your business at the next level will begin to grow. In that 20 to 30 number of transactions in a year, now you have not just a pretty good side business, but you've got a legitimate income. You're probably making as much or more than your spouse. You're realizing that this is a tremendous opportunity and you're starting to get repeat and referral business coming in. In that 20 to 30, this is where people really start to see the wheels come off their lives. They start giving up time with their friends, their family, their faith, their fun, and their fitness in order to take care of all of the people People that are demanding their time at work. In this phase, this is where we often see people go to their broker owners or to their team leaders and say, you know, I, I need to have help. I need some help here. Um, they often hire people that aren't really qualified for positions just because they need some help. And we do what we call opportunity hires. I don't know how many of you have made those opportunity hires in the past, but they're very frustrating because you hire a friend or a family member to come in and help you, but they don't really have the skills and you don't have the systems or the training in place to develop them. And so there's a high level of frustration in the interaction. Everything you do at this point, you do so well, is in your head and it's in your heart. And when you do a great job for people, all it does is create more opportunities. And so this is a high level of stress and anxiety in a business. But when you get here, there's tremendous opportunity for growth. In the 
30 to 50 transactions. This is where we now have a full-time assistant. We've got somebody really helping us. We've got a little bit better balance in our life and we see that there's even more tremendous opportunity for scale. In the 30 to 50 transactions, this phase of business is one of the hardest as a coach to develop agents to break out of. Sometimes going from you know, that 30 to 50 or even the 50 to 100 is where we take a one to two years to grow. We can take somebody from, you know, 10 to 20 and 20 to 40 in a, in, a, in a year over year growth. But that 40 to 80, that next big bump, we have to pretty much break everything. Our operational excellence, our systems, the way that we think about leads, how we convert the B and the C leads instead of just focusing on the A leads, all of those things have to be put in place. It's harder to go from 50 to 100 than it is to go from 100 to 200. This phase of business is the hardest. But when we understand systems and how to create leverage with human resources, it's so rewarding. I'm going to say something to you that will kind of blow your mind. And that is that when you're doing 200 transactions a year, you'll be working less and have lower stress than when you're doing 30. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but it's absolutely true. And the reason is because when you get to that 100 transactions, we have systems for everything. And you start to buy back that one thing that is your most valuable resource, and that is your time. A lot of people say that I don't have time to build a team, or I don't have time to follow up with B-Leaves, or I don't have time to do the social media marketing, or I don't have time to do these things. The acronym for time is simply this, and write it down. That is my excuse. No. And no one person has any more time than anybody else. But why is it that some people get so much more done in their day? It's because they look internally to say, how can I spend my most valuable resource so I get the highest return on time instead of using time as the excuse as to why I don't get the important things done? I don't know how many of you feel like this, but I'm a father of six. I have nine grandchildren. I'm a busy guy. I'm running a very complex and fast growing business with over 60 coaches that are developing and helping agents worldwide. And I'm juggling all of these things. How do you do all of it and still maintain balance in your life and be married for 35 years and have a great relationship? The answer to that is leverage. When, because we don't have eight arms, when you put one thing down, you can pick something else up, but you have to choose what thing you're going to put down. I used an example one time, and I wish you could do the visual of this, of juggling balls. And if we picked eight juggling balls and we wrote the most important things in our life on those balls, you would have your spouse or significant other, you would have your parents, you would have the names of each of your children, you would have buyer clients, seller clients, agents on the team, you would have your faith, you would have fitness, and you'd say, look at all the balls, now how many can you juggle at the same time? And what are the ones that you refuse to drop the ball on? I would pick up my family, that's number one, and say I'm not, gonna, I'm not willing to have success at the expense of my family. I like to say that no other, no other success can compensate for failure in the home. And what I mean by that is, is that if you have success at the expense of your relationship with your spouse or your children, then is it really success? And so I pick up those balls and, I, and, I, and I, I can juggle three. So my number is three. I can juggle three at a time. If you go to four, now it becomes expertise. And so if I am going to pick up a fourth ball, I have to decide which one of these three critical things I'm going to put down. I want you to think about what your non-negotiables are and the balls that you must do. And if you realize there's more than three, then in order to get the other balls in the air, you have to find somebody else's hands to lift them up and juggle them. You have to create resource. And we create, we create leverage resources in two different areas. One, in human resources, people to help us, and two, in technology. The hardest thing is when you suffer like Gollum did from that nobody can do it as good as me syndrome. I want you to think about all these things that you do. You know, I'm the best with buyers. I'm the best with sellers. I'm the best at negotiating. Nobody can do it as good as me. When you have the no one can do it as good as me syndrome, what happens is you hold on to that little ring just like Gollum did and you put it on and you're like, it's my precious. I will hold it. I'm going to keep it. And when someone tries to take it from you, it changes who you are. You hold on to things so tight and so strong that the very thing you're holding on to becomes the thing that eventually will destroy you. The thing that you're holding on to, what are the things that you need to let go of in order to be able to have 
the freedom that you're looking for in your life. You know, it's okay to let it go. It's okay to allow someone else to do administrative tasks. It's okay to let somebody follow up with leads. It is okay to allow a buyer's agent to show properties, to negotiate contracts and put them and, and, and follow up with these B and C leads that you don't want to work with anymore. What if I could get you to no longer work with buyers? Wouldn't that be cool? What if you got to a place where you no longer had to work with sellers and we delegated that? So you delegate the administrative tasks, the buyer tasks, and the seller tasks, and you become the true CEO of your business. You no longer hold on to those things that you believe are precious because you've taught other people how to be excellent in that business. And that's why people form and build what I like to call their A-teams. An A-team is a group of people that want to be great at the business. They want to take care of their families. They want to provide amazing services to the client. And we create a culture and environment where everybody can see can succeed in that role. Building your A-team is intentional. It doesn't happen accidentally. So you have to intentionally decide where you want to go, and what it's gonna look like when you get there. And we do that with a strategic plan. When people ask me about teams, and I hear I have a lot of conversations about them, they ask me, why do your teams, why are the teams you coach so successful? My answer is simply that, is because we look in advance as to why teams fail. They have no training, they, have, they allow the agents to run the roost, they don't have any control, there's no accountability, and they don't set up any core values. By going through and eliminating excuses for failure one by one, before we ever start our team, it allows us to have a much more likely likelihood of success in the interaction of building your team. The other thing I like to focus on when it comes to building a great team is I'm a big fan of Patrick Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. In Patrick Lencioni's book, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, he talks about why teams fail. And in this great parable of a leader coming in to develop teams within an organization, it sets a real clear tone on how we can and should build our successful seven-figure real estate teams. So let's start with the five dysfunctions. Let me just share with you what they are. The first one is absence of trust. I don't trust my team members to do a good job, therefore I have to do it myself. I don't trust my team leader. I think they're taking all the A leads, therefore I don't feel like I'm getting good value. The balance becomes, the relationship becomes out of balance when there's an absence of trust. And the way that we fix trust is by training and developing our people at a really high level and by having clearly defined roles and clearly defined goals. By clearly defining those roles and goals, everybody knows what their job is on the team and everybody does their best to execute. If you come from a place of abundance and you really truly believe that nobody on your team gets up and hopes they fail, they come to work every day leaving their families hoping they can provide a good living for them, if you believe genuinely that people are good, then we should give them everything they need to be successful. And that includes one of the most important things and we have to give them our trust. The second thing is fear of conflict. This is an interesting one. A lot of people think conflict is bad. Conflict is only bad when we attack people. I don't believe we have people problems. I believe we have process problems. And so when our people aren't performing at a level that we expect, then we attack the process and say, how can we fix our process so our people can perform at a higher level? When, you aren't, when you're afraid of conflict, what happens is your meetings are boring and nobody comes in with any, um, with any ideas wanting to challenge the status quo. When people challenge the status quo, you constantly improve and you're constantly looking at new ideas and new ways of doing things. You know, I've, uh, I've hated this last year where we've all had to deal with COVID-19 because it's, because it's been frustrating to not be able to go out, to have to wear masks in public places, to be uh, wondering whether or not we're going to have an event. But it's also created a tremendous amount of opportunity. Because of conflict, because of people challenging the status quo, we've gotten better at virtual real estate. We've gotten better at qualifying leads before we go into homes. We've gotten better at doing virtual open houses. Because of conflict and healthy conflict and changing the status quo, we have teams that are producing more real estate today than they ever have in their history, while others have been afraid. And so if you are afraid of conflict, you won't push forward. So conflict is a good thing, so don't be afraid of it. Challenge process, not people, and you'll find that conflict is a healthy thing on your team. The third thing is lack of commitment. In the five dysfunctions of a team, when I think about lack of commitment, I think about lack of commitment to who or to what. 
lack of commitment to the customer, lack of commitment to the lead, lack of commitment to the system, lack of commitment to the team leader. How about lack of commitment to the team member? But most importantly, when you don't do the things that you need to do to succeed, the lack of commitment is to your family. You see, every day when you get up and you leave home, your family believes that you're doing everything you can to create a great living for them. But if you're going out and doing pretend work or fake work, and you're not doing actually anything that moves you closer to your goals, you're not focusing your time on prospecting and looking for new business, all you do is go to the office or you go hang out with friends or you go to coffee and hope somebody calls and turns himself in, that is a lack of commitment to your family and it's a lack of commitment to your goals. And I challenge all of you to ask yourself, am I doing the things that are consistent with a full commitment to my family? And if the answer is no, then let's change that behavior and let's change the way we commit. The next one is avoidance of accountability. And this is a huge one because accountability is perceived by so many to be a negative thing. Accountability is, when I think of accountability, I think of when my when my teenagers stay out past curfew and I know they're walking in at one in the morning instead of midnight, I don't have to say anything. I just hold out my hand and they go, yeah, okay. And they put their phone in my hand because they know they've done something wrong. So accountability is oftentimes a, a perceived as a punishment for doing something wrong. Today, I'd like to change your perception on what accountability is in business. Look, guys, ladies and gentlemen, I know this. I know that you're all strong individuals. You're entrepreneurs. You're out there doing the best you can. And I can't make you do anything you don't want to do. So accountability is a farce. All accountability is, is awareness. If I can create an environment where you are aware that the activities you're doing are not gonna create the result that you want, if I can create an, a, an awareness that if we track the right things in your business, we'll start getting a higher result. By giving and creating awareness, it creates accountability, which is a choice that you make. And I believe accountability is the most important choice you will ever make. So choose accountability because it's a good thing. It's not something someone can do to you. It's something that you do yourself because you have awareness that the activities you're focused on are not giving you the result that you really want. And then the last of the five dysfunctions is simply inattention to results. And that's your inability to track the right things and know what's going on. We oftentimes, and you know, I think it's funny at these national conventions that I'll go to, when agents walk across the stage and they're given awards for mediocrity. They're given awards for being in the 100% club, which means that they barely qualified to be able to even have a job. Uh, you know, they get awards for making 20 or $30,000. It's, you know, it's poverty level income and they get an award for that. We don't track the right things. I want you to, now I'm not against awards. I love celebrating successes at every level and just doing better than your last time. So don't get me wrong, but I want you to celebrate the activities that give you the result that you want. What if instead of tracking your GCI, or what if instead of tracking your, your number of units sold, what if we focused on the number of appointments you had this week? How many face-to-face -face appointments did you have with a potential buyer or seller? And how many of those face-to-faces converted into a buyer or seller agreement? What if we just tracked those two things? And every day we celebrate our successes by whether or not we got the number of appointments that are in our goals. When you don't track the right things, you don't get the right result. So we put systems and processes in place to track the right things. All right, so we've set up the five dysfunctions. We've talked about why teams fail. Now I'd like to talk about the critical numbers you need to know in your business that will help you get your mind around how and when to hire critical people for your team. Are you ready? Okay, so first of all, you gotta know that listings matter. When you own the inventory, the army of agents in your marketplace that have buyers are out there selling your houses. When you represent a buyer, you compete with every one of those agents that have buyers looking for that same individual home. And in today's market where we have a tremendous amount of pressure on the inventory and not enough inventory, you better own it. And so I'm gonna encourage you as a leader of your team, as an individual agent, to focus on the area that makes the most impact and that is listings. You must be a master lister. So become a great lister. When you get one listing, here's the numbers you need to know. One listing will equal between six and eight, eight buyer leads every single month. So if you have 10 listings, you should have you know 60 to 80 leads a month. Every listing you get, you should close 1.5 buy side transactions. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. If you, um, if you go on a listing and you get the listing, you spend a couple of hours and you get 
1.5 transactions for the couple hours spent. When you work with a buyer, you'll spend 20 hours and you'll get one transaction. So is it better for you to spend two hours and get two and a half deals or 20 hours and get one? Think about that. The next piece of information I think is critical that you understand is that for every 25 leads that you generate, I want you to add one buyer's agent. That is a magic number for success in team building. Okay, so let's talk about the why behind that. First of all, when you have 10 listings, we've got 60 to 80 leads coming in a month. How many buyer's agents do you need? You need three. The reason you need three is if you have fewer than three and you give one agent more than 25 leads a month, here's what happens. Month one, they have 25. Month two, they have 50 they're following up with. Month three, they have 75. And in four months, they've got 100 leads. No individual agent can effectively follow up with 100 people and do a great job with it. And so we set them up for failure and they start cherry picking the leads. When they start cherry picking those leads, their conversion rates go way down because they're not having enough conversations with the people. So we have to create lead scarcity. When you hire a buyer's agent, their job is prospecting, showing homes, negotiating contracts. Nowhere in there is working my leads from the team. Getting team leads is a reward for doing the other three things well. So understand and know those numbers. Having a team creates energy. You know, when I think about teams, I think about the doctor's office. Uh, about two years ago, I remember going into the, I want, well, I had to get back surgery. So my back had gotten to the point where after 10 years of abuse and carrying this huge body around, it was just tired. And so I had to get surgery. And so I've done everything I can to avoid surgery, but it was time. And I remember thinking to myself, um, I, I met with my general practitioner, he did an MRI, he looked at my blown out disc and he says, oh yep, looks like we're gonna have to do your back. And I said, tell me more about that. He says, well, you know, I also do backs. And I thought about that for a minute and I thought, do I really want someone who also does backs working on my back? Or do I want a true specialist who does backs better than anybody else? Do I want Tiger Woods back surgeon? That's who I want. And so I started doing research and I started looking into it. And I found the person that I wanted to do my back surgery. I wanted someone that does it in his sleep because he does it so many times. I wanted someone that was cutting edge with technology. And I called to get in, you know what they said? They said, no, thank you. We're not taking any new patients. Well, of course, to me, when someone says no, that's like a personal challenge. And so I started working my network. I started reaching out to people that I know, doctors, uh, nurses, people in the field. And I found out that somebody who owns a houseboat with me in a partnership group, their wives play tennis together. This doctor that I want and this partner. So I called the wife and I said, this is my situation. Can you possibly get me in? She made the phone call to get me in. And I got an appointment. I was so excited, 90 days out. So 90 days out, I went down to the office and I sat in the office and I was so excited. I sat there and I waited. I sat, first I met with the receptionist. The receptionist asked me for my information, my insurance card, and of course the credit card for my copay. And then I sat there in the waiting room and I waited for about an hour and I get a phone, I get a, I get a, a PA, a physician's assistant in a white coat named Dave. And Dave opens the door and he says, Vern, Vern Workman, I said, it's Verl. And he's, all right, Vern, come on back. And I said, all right, nice to meet you. He says, I'm Dave, I'm Dr. Reichman's PA. And I said, Dave, it's really great to meet you. When do I see Dr. Reichman? He says, you won't see him today, but just bear with me for a moment. You'll find that I'm an expert. Dave had been with Dr. Reichman for over 20 years, had done thousands of surgeries with him. And he said, we had a meeting and we discussed as physicians what your case would look like. And here's what we learned. And he spent 45 minutes with me looking at my disc and what they were gonna do and how were they gonna go and fix it up and what they would do if it was worse than they thought and what they could see on the MRI. And when I was done, I felt such a high level of confidence. But I also felt a little disappointed that I know people. I ought to get it in to see this Dr. R. And so Dave says, well, you'll meet him right before surgery. We scheduled the surgery six months later. And I remember going in and thinking, well, I hope I get to meet Dr. R. So I'm laying on the gurney and I'm waiting and the anesthesiologist comes in and introduces himself to me and says, we're gonna count backwards from 100. I said, wait a second, I haven't met the doctor. He says, oh, hold on a second. He called the doctor over. The doctor come, came over and said, hi, nice to meet you. Leanne says, take good care of you. I said, thank you and please do. I then counted backwards from 100, 99, 90, and I was out. After surgery, I wake up and guess who's there? I was so excited to be able to have Dr. R tell me how great it went, but it was Dave. And Dave says everything went great. 
Dr. R is in the next surgery, helping the next patient recover, but he said everything went amazing. Here's what we did, this is what we ended up having to do, and you're now gonna go through a series of rehab. I'm gonna give you a physical therapist. You're gonna have a nurse that works with you. And I went through the entire rehab process. Now, I want you to think about my experience for just a minute. In real estate, it's about the only business that I am familiar with where the surgeon does everything. What if, if I had walked into the doctor's office and Dr. R would have greeted me and asked for my insurance card? And then he would have pulled me back in the back and set me on the scale, took my blood pressure, and then sat down with me and said, okay, I've looked at your thing and I can do this. Would you have been okay with that? Because I think I would have probably been scared. I want a neurosurgeon to work on me and to be engaged in my case at the most important part of the transaction. And that's when I'm opened up and they're in doing surgery. I want you as real estate agents to think of your role as the surgeon. And everything else that supports that, I want you to hire people and create systems to build your A team. And I want you to build a team of Daves, a team of great physical therapists, a team of great buyer's agents, a team of great administrative assistants, so that you can do the things you do better than anybody else and allow them to be great at the parts of the business they do amazing. The first hire on a team is your director of first impressions. It's your client care coordinator. I don't ever call my client care coordinator an assistant. I want my assistant, you know, nobody, nobody, nobody gets up in the morning and hopes they can be someone's assistant. But to be in charge of client care, to be in, in charge of making sure that our clients have an amazing experience, to make sure that the team leader is able to support their family while creating an opportunity for everybody else to be successful, a client care coordinator is a great role. The very first position you should hire is your client care coordinator. A client care coordinator should be focused on this. And these are the things that matter. Everything you do three times, you need to create a system for it. Anything you do three times, putting a proper in the MLS, the way that we enter, the way that we order inspections, the way that we review contacts, the way that we review contact tracks, the way that we go over and do multiple offers, uh, the way that we do marketing around a property, the way we hold open houses, all of those systems must be documented and recorded so that anybody sitting in that seat can do it well. Operational excellence creates scale. So one of the first things we do in developing a team is we'll go in and we'll do an evaluation of all of their systems. And what we find is most of us don't really have very good systems. And so we fix those first. Once we have your systems in place, then we can turn everything up. Your client care coordinator should be the client, the director of client experiences and the director of the vibe for the team. They're the keeper of the culture. They're the ones that keep everything going. Um, the job of a client care coordinator is to allow the team leader to spend more time prospecting and listing homes. Everything else should be taken off the plate by the client care coordinator. And if you do that, you're going to be in a great you're going to be in a great position to grow. The next thing is is that the client care coordinator needs to have a different personality type or a different behavioral style that allows them to be uh, and have a higher level of attention on the details so the team leader doesn't have to focus or worry about it. Here's an example of a DISC motivator survey that we use in the hiring process. We use a tr tremendously a company called Wise Hire to hire. When you set up a Wise Hire account and you're advertising with Wise Hire and you do the ads, you get a DISC motivators for every candidate as part of the process. When you look at a DISC profile, this particular DISC profile is one of our rock star client care core coordinators. She's got a really high S, which means she, she loves and it's natural to her to be in a supporting role. She actually cares more about the other people on the team than she does about herself. She wants to make sure everybody is treated fair and is a great keeper of the culture. The high C in the adaptive style and the natural style means that there's a really high attention to the details. This profile will not be able to sleep at night if their checklist is not complete. And so they will go out of their way to make sure everything is done at a really high level so the team leader can sleep just fine. When you look at the motivators, which is on the right-hand side of your screen, the motivators are aesthetic, how things look, economic, motivated by money, uh, individualistic, which is the need to have their name on everything, altruistic, the about, the about giving and making a difference. When I look at all of the motivators, I look at the areas that are outside the square. When I look at regulatory, and I've got someone that's above 50 in regulatory, what that means is I have a rule follower. When I set systems and processes in place, they will follow the rules. This is exactly what 
what you need in a client care coordinator. Also in the, in the theoretical, which is interesting, this one's really high, almost a 90. When someone's that high in theoretical, we have to be careful that we don't have someone that will get stuck in analysis paralysis. Theoretical means that they think of all of the possible scenarios before they're able to move forward. And so we discuss that during the interview process and we put systems in place to make sure that we continue to move the process forward. The next thing that is absolutely critical, when you hire your client care coordinator, you must train them. I don't know of any other companies that provide this, but we have a program called AMP, and the AMP program stands for Admin Mastery. It's simply 60 self-paced videos that teaches an admin how to be a rock star administrative assistant or client care coordinator with all of the lead tracking, the time blocking, the scheduling, uh, the transaction tracking and software, all of the things they need to build a successful operations manual. We build it all inside of that AMP program, and obviously that's available to everybody. Everybody. Let's talk about the buyer's agent and what the buyer's agent looks like. So first of all, here's a great profile of a rock star buyer's agent. On the disc, I look for, I don't want someone that's too high of a D. Oftentimes my team leaders are high DIs on the disc profile, which is what I am by the way. I now. When I say I look for something, these are guidelines. I don't hire and I don't fire to DISC. We use DISC as a guideline in the interview process to understand someone's behavior. As Rick likes to say, it doesn't measure integrity and it doesn't measure work ethic. It just measures how they're gonna behave in cer cer certain circumstances. And so we look at DISC and we understand that the behavior of this person naturally is they're gonna be the life of the party. They're not even gonna think the party starts until they get there. That high eye comes in with such high energy, they oftentimes interview really well. And so you gotta make sure that they have the other skills. The D in here, which is a natural D just above 50, means they've got the drive and determination to get crap done, but it's not so so high that it's going to run over everybody in the process of trying to get things done. So I like the DI in this style. The other thing that I that I like here in this disc is that I've got someone who's got a high C, which has the ability to do contracts and pay attention to the details that's going to create a low risk for me as a team leader. And on the adapted style, they become better at dealing with others and not caring so much about their self. And so this disc is a really well balanced disc profile for someone who's adapted to be a good team member. And I like that. People People adapt because of life circumstances and, their, and the things that happen in their journey. Over here I look at their motivators, an economic motivator is off the chart. This agent needs to be economically sound and there's been something that's happened in their life that causes them to have fear of not being financially secure. And so the economic motivator is really high and during the interview process we're going to talk about that. And so I look at the DISC motivators for this individual and I say this is a good candidate for a buyer's agent. Now your job as a team leader, once you find somebody like this, you take them through a interview process, your job is to make sure that you have a clearly defined roles and clearly defined goals of what the minimum standard is to be on your team. Now I'm going to talk about compensation here with this group for just a minute because I need you to understand that your job as a team leader is to provide stability and security for your team. You cannot do that if you don't put the right splits in place. And so I'm going to share with you the splits that we use for our most successful and profitable teams. A buyer's agent, in order to be on one of our teams, has to commit to a minimum of two transactions a month. All they have to do is prospect, show houses, and negotiate contracts. If you can't do two a month, you're not working full time. And so two deals a month as a buyer's agent. We put them on a 40-60 split for the first two transactions they do in a month. 45-55 for deals three and four, and then 50-50 on five plus. The minimum level of production is two. I really want my agents between three and five transactions a month. When they're consistently producing three to five deals a month, they're earning a lot more income than the one or two deals they do every couple months on a 100% split. And so when you're recruiting someone to these numbers, you have to understand that the dialogue we use is, what's more important to you? The amount of money you take home to your family or the split you're on? I want you to think about that. Because if the amount of money is more important for you to take home than the split you're on, you're gonna earn more money being part of my team than you will by being an individual agent. And I can see your history and that's exactly the truth. And then we take that buyer agent and we put them through 16 self-paced sessions on how to become a master buyer's agent. How do you do it? How do you prospect? What are the things that you track? How do we measure success on a daily basis? It's all done in the buyer agent mastery training program. I'm gonna show you 
well, how you can have access to that for 30 days to see how you can really get into it. Okay, so the next thing is a listing partner. Now, listing partners are really interesting. Oftentimes, and in most cases, our listing partner is our team leader. When I can get an agent who's good at everything to just focus on listings, we have exponential growth and traumatic uh, profitability happens on the team because it creates opportunities for everybody else. A great listing partner oftentimes looks like this. So we have a high DNNI, we have a high economic motivator, we have a high individualistic, someone who wants to be out there making a difference, and this is a good disc motivator. Now, I have, I want you to all know that I have seven figures, meaning making a million dollars a year in commission, team leaders that are high Ds, high Is, high Ss, and high Cs. The DISC profile does not determine your likelihood for success. And so you can have success in any behavioral style. You just have to choose to work outside of what's naturally comfor comfortable for you in areas where you might find challenging. If I, if I can't make you a little bit uncomfortable as your coach, I'm probably the wrong coach. So I'm gonna ask you to step out of what's comfortable and help you find success in your business. With our listing partners, a good listing partner should be able to list between 75 and 125 houses a year. We pay our listing partners on a 25 to 30% split, and we train them in our program called Listing Agent Mastery, or SLAM. And they go through 30 videos, and this, this whole training program was designed by people who list over 200 houses a year. So we took their, pro their listing programs, their pre-listing packages, we teach the concept and the process of a sell, how to build relationships, how to develop a premium marketing plan, how to use social media. We use all of our resources at our grasp today to help create absolute rock stars in the listing process. A listing uh, specialist agreement will look something like this. We pay 25 to 30% uh, on closed sales, and that's enough. I'll tell you what, you're listing 70, 80 houses a year at 25%, you're making a couple hundred thousand dollars and it's a great living. And you've got a great team behind you doing everything that happens once you get that listing agreement signed. So your job as a listing agent is to prospect, list, negotiate contracts. Everything else, the marketing, the open houses, and all those other activities are handled by the team. We just launched in 2020 a brand new program for new agent training called RAMP. It stands for Rising Agent Mastery. It's simply a training program that allows people to get in and get to two transactions a month. If you want, and you're watching this class, or you're part of this, this, this uh, event, and you want to increase your production by two transactions a month, I don't care how much you're doing, if you want to grow by two transactions a month, go through 90 days of ramp and you'll find a tremendous result. I like to say that which gets measured gets done and in the training you're going to see a lot of these resources in your free downloads. I'm going to give you some of this as well. One of the first things that we measure is the activities that make a difference. This is called our Daily Success Habits Tracker. So as you focus on your daily success habits, the goal is to get 61 points a day doing dollar productive activities. So we track the number of prospecting calls you make, the number of prospecting emails or text messages you send, the handwritten notes that go out, the recurring appointments that are made, the appointments that are kept, the retention that's made, this is for recruiting, so this is a little bit different than the one that you'd use as a buyer's agent. So as a team leader, this is what yours would look like, and so we just crank with that. The next thing that we do is we focus on the activities that generate the results we want, and we track it. Now, everybody has a way of tracking leads. This is a Google Drive lead tracker. This lead tracker allows you to put every lead in a lead tracker in Google Drive on first contact, and then it shows us how what our conversion rates look like, what leads come from what resources, and then we can make all of our decisions based on data going forward. So many people struggle with using their gut to decide whether or not they should buy more Zillow leads, or should I turn up Boontown? or should I turn on more sync? The answer to that question is found in the numbers and if you track the right things, you pay attention to the results you're getting from each of those lead sources, you make your decisions based on data. So if I'm getting a 6x return on any lead source, I can go from a $1,000 spend to $5,000 spend because I have the systems and processes to maintain that level of conversion. The next thing we want to track is this is a transaction tracker where we're tracking the number of transactions that are happening by every team by every team leader and team member. This goes a little bit deeper and gives us a lot more data than what you're seeing on this screen, but the team leader should have their assistant put in all of the transactions and I should know how many transactions the team is doing, how many buyer side, how many seller sides and what their commission is and it's all built out in the transaction tracking tracker.
All right, remember we talked about accountability equals love. Accountability creates awareness by tracking leads, by tracking number of appointments, by doing your daily success habits. What happens is, is you start to get clarity on what's going on in your business and that creates accountability. Awareness comes from clarity. And then when you are aware, you change behavior. And when you change behavior, you're now holding yourself accountable and accountability equals love. As a leader, your job is to create a culture. You're, and, and, and I gotta tell you that every business has a specific culture. And that culture is, that culture is to create a, a culture of productivity, meaning that, so I'm gonna think about how I say this. Everybody has a culture and your culture can either be intentionally created or accidentally created. An accidentally created culture is where the agents are kind of running the business. They decide whether or not they come to meetings. They decide whether or not they prospect. They decide whether or not they're going to do the daily success habits and get their 61 points. When you focus on creating a culture of productivity, what happens is, is the agents follow your system. They know that if they don't do two transactions a month, they won't be part of the team. They know if they don't come in for a daily huddle, that they don't be going to be part of the team. Here's an example of what happens with our daily huddle. So in a culture of productivity, in a culture of productivity, every day we have to do a 15 minute huddle. And during that 15 minute huddle, we track a few things. I want to know, did you complete your activity track and your daily success habits? How many points did you get? How many face-to-face -face meetings did you have? Did you make a certain minimum number of dials or prospecting calls? I go through that huddle every single day. At the end of the huddle, we then meet together as a team and we practice scripts and dialogues. We role play. We role play things like LP Mama, location, price, motivation, working with an agent, qualify for a mortgage, set the appointment. We change it now to LP ma'am. We set the we 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 get their motivation, we set the appointment before we actually find out whether or not they're qualified. I want to meet with them face to face. I'll work on qualification later. There are no bad leads, only for people who aren't ready yet. So our job as leaders is to create an environment where our agents are productive. So I want you to think about that. You come in for a huddle, you review your numbers from yesterday, we celebrate your successes and give you some challenges. And then we practice our scripts and dialogues. We go through it with each other. You be the buyer, I'll be the seller. Let's go through this process. I'll be the agent. And then when you're done, you are in the mood for picking up the phone. And as a team, we get on the phone and we prospect for a minimum of one, excuse me, one hour a day. Now think about what would happen on your team if you actually did that. It would be a tremendous success. All right, so a simple team would look like this. We have a team leader who's out there listing a bunch of houses. We have a client care coordinator who's your first hire. And then we hire a buyer's agent based on the number of listings that we have. So if you have two listings, I'm gonna get one buyer's agent because I know I'm gonna get 10 leads a month and then I'm gonna teach them how to prospect. If I have five listings or 10 listings, it's gonna be based on the number of listings I get and the number of leads that we're able to convert. Once you start doing 50, 60, 100 transactions a year, then we simply add another person to the support team and we change one from being client care doing everything to specialists on just doing transactions. And that's how the team eventually grows. If you have a more complex team, it might look like this. You have a sales manager, buyer's agents, listing partners, inside salespeople converting. You have a support team. We can do hundreds of transactions. And as we grow, the team leader takes a lower role in production and a higher role in leadership. The team leader's role moves from being the number one producer on the team to creating an environment and a culture where everybody wants to be part of it. Your job as a team leader is to create stability and security for the people that you serve on your team. Your team members are your clients. Think about that. They're not your minions. They're not there to bid for you. They're there for you to serve. And as a team leader, if you will serve your people and you help them get everything they want and you lift them up in their financial status, you create an environment for them to succeed, then you will get everything you want in your life. What an amazing concept is the more you help other people get what they want, the more you get what you want out of your own life. And that's what it means to have a great team. And we do that by creating specialization. Just like the surgeon's office, everybody specialized in their part of the transaction. And the end result was I feel great and I have amazing, I have an ama I have an, I, I feel great, I have an amazing strength in my back and I'm able to do things I wasn't able to do before surgery. So let me give you some of Big V's tips for team success.
Number one is you have to understand why we have core values and what the core values are. Number two, you have to understand the importance of those core values with the team. Number three is we have the team establish their core values of what they want that culture to look like. And then we present those core values to the team. We discuss why they're going to be part of our focus. And then we start to use those core values to hire and fire. I don't hire and fire to disc, but I do hire and fire to core values. And agents can be released or team members can be released from our team for not adhering to the core values or more importantly, deliberately. Uh, stepping on a core value. Here's a sample of our core values at Workman Success Systems. Number one, choose to be happy. I believe that happiness is a choice and that every day you get up, you can be grateful for the day. And we, we all have crap that goes on in our lives. We all have stuff that drags us down and we all have stuff we have to deal with, but you can still make the choice to be happy. Number two is communicate openly and honestly. I want to have good conflict and I want communication to happen that's open and honest with each other where we attack process, not attack people. I want our people to have and share their vision so that we can grow. When you have amazing people that have and share vision, everybody does better as a result. We believe that integrity is not something you talk about, but it's who you are at your core. And you're either honest or you're not, so integrity in everything we do. Live freely to me was an important one as a team leader that I want my people to live debt free. Living freely means that you're not burdened by uh, encumbrances that give you, uh, that keep you from being able to invest in real estate and to own homes and to build true wealth. Have and show gratitude to me was one of the most important core values because where much is given, much is expected. And if you're not grateful and you don't appreciate the opportunities that you're given, you're not going to be successful on a team. And the last thing, and I use this all the time, is we persist until we succeed. And that means that we follow up with our leads until they buy or tell you to die, that we persist until they file a restraining order. It means that we don't give up on people just because they're hard. If people are making the efforts and they're doing the right things, then we continue to develop and pour into them. We persist until we succeed. Failure cannot be your payment for struggle. We persist until we succeed. When you have a great team that's functioning well, there's an energy and enthusiasm and excitement that makes you feel like you're part of not just any team, but you're part of the A team. Building a team is not for everybody and nobody should tell you what kind of business you should own. I'm just here to say that if you want leverage in your life, you want to create amazing scale and you want to bring home more money and more time to your families, then you might want to consider building your A team too. So now what? You've listened to Big V for about 45 minutes. I've shared with you ideas and structure and things that you could do to help develop your team. So now what? So let me give you the list of what to do next. Number one, decide if you need leverage. Is the answer yes or no? I need leverage. If the answer is yes, reach out. Number two, reach out to Workman Success for coaching or for help or for resources. We're here to help you. Um, not to sell you, but to help you. If you want help, let's have a conversation. If we find there's a good fit, then that's great. If there's not a good fit, I promise you will give you some ideas or things you can focus on that will help you regardless of whether or not you engage. Next, create your core values. Work on who you are and what those values really mean. Number three, build or use clearly defined roles and responsibilities that I'm going to share with you as part of your downloads. Make sure that everybody knows their role on the team and they have a clear measure of what success looks like. Create a compensation plan that allows you to be at profitability of 50% after your cost of sale, meaning after whatever it costs to generate the leads and close a deal and pay your agents that there's 50% left for you. If you don't do that, it's very difficult to be profitable. Next, in 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 intentionally create your culture of productivity. Be intentional about it, not accidental. Be the keeper of your culture and make sure that your agents are on board with getting up every day, coming into a huddle, practicing your and role playing your scripts and dialogues and getting on the phones and prospecting. The next thing that I think is critical for everybody, whether you work with us or not, find someone that can really help you at another level. Find a coach that can look at your business from a different perspective. Download the free Workman Success Systems things that I'm going to give you today and start implementing. Just use them. Use the daily success habits with your team and watch what happens. 61 points a day every single day. And last, if you really want to have massive action, you have to have, if you really want a massive result, 
you have to take massive action. Massive action creates massive results. If you don't shake it up, if you don't something do something big, if you don't take a massive step or massive action, then you'll never get a massive result. So if you want to change your outcome, you want to change what's possible, change what you're focused on and I promise you'll get there. Here's another screenshot of things I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you clearly defined roles and responsibilities. I'm going to give you the daily huddle agenda. I'm going to give you a, if you sign up for one of our strategy sessions, I'll just give you the access to the training center for 30 days and you can use that with your team and use some of the training that's in there. And I'm going to, of course, give you the daily success habits track. Make sure you download it, engage in the process and do something different. And last but not least, I'm going to share this with you. And that is how I believe and feel about life and everything in the middle. The life is not a journey to the grave with the intention of arriving pretty and safely in a well-preserved body, but rather to skid in broadside, thoroughly used up, totally worn out, loudly proclaiming, whoo, what a ride. Let's have a great ride together as you take your business and your team to the next level. Rick, I'm going to throw it back to you. Oh my gosh, right? Hello, that was great. That was more than great. Vero, we can't thank you enough for your time and your energy and the amount of research you did so that you could deliver something so amazing. And, and such a nice broad perspective and then narrow down to specifics so that you can take notes, like I hopefully, I'm hoping you did, and then use this information to build from there. Now, Verl's all always available. He delivered some free products to you. If you go to that link he talked about, and I would if I were you. If nothing else, get a consultation and see where you're at in your life and your business. Verl, we can't thank you enough, and we look forward to seeing more of you in the future. I've been really looking forward to hearing our next speaker. Her name's Alicia Baruti. She's with BombBomb. Now, most real estate agents have at least heard of BombBomb, an incredible video program to use in sending out emails and really learning to use video at a very creative level. And we are so excited that she stopped, took some time out of her day to present to us how to be the most effective using bomb bomb and using video. So I got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to this. I've got like my pen and pad ready because I have been lousy at this and I know it's the wave of the future. So let's thank Alicia very much from the bottom of our hearts by paying attention and then using it to make a difference in our business. Thanks, Alicia. Take it away. Thank you so much for that introduction, Rick. I am so excited to be here. Uh, like Rick said, my name is Alicia. I'm the national speaker at BombBomb, which basically is just a fancy way to say that I am an evangelist. Now, one of the best parts of my job are the success stories that I get to hear from real estate agents and brokers using video in their business on a regular basis. Video works, but it's not because it's some magic pill for your business. Video works because it's getting you face-to-face -face more often. We know that relationships, building relationships and maintaining relationships is such an important part of our business. And yet so much of our communication is left to plain text emails and text messages which make it really, really hard to have that human connection piece. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to talk to you about how you can use video to rehumanize your business. And we're gonna talk about ways that I see agents using video really successfully for building and maintaining relationships, how agents are using video for transactions, and then how agents are using video to scale their business. So we live in a very video centric society. We know this, we've seen this happening over the last several years. If you've been in real estate over the last se several years, you've been hearing, you gotta use video, you gotta use video. And now we've gone from where video was almost a nice to have to where it's really become a need to have, right? The whole world has shifted. And we've seen such an influx of people that are needing to figure out how to still run their business in a really human way when you can't be face to face. And that's exactly what we're talking about with this kind of simple video. I want to just share with you some stats on video. So this first one, 64% of consumers make a purchase after watching branded social videos, 64%. After watching a video on social, feel like they have either enough know, like, and trust with that brand or the influencer to go ahead and make a purchase. Marketers who use video, they grow revenue 
49% faster than non-video users. And then this last one is a big one. Viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch it in a video as compared to only 10% when reading it in text. Think about that. How much of your business do you spend explaining things? Just the simple fact of sending a video means that your client is going to be able to understand and retain that information. As well as we all know, it's easier to just talk than to try and explain something over an email. Now, those statistics are very indicative of video for marketing which is a really, really important piece of your business. That public facing social media, listing videos, all of that. But what we're actually focusing on today is this idea of relationships through video, using video to build relationships. This idea of no like, and trust, these aren't sales buzzwords. This is how people actually make decisions. They want to work with an agent that they feel comfortable with, that they trust, that they like, that they're going to be willing to spend time with. And unfortunately, when we're sending communication like this, it's not that there's anything wrong with this email, but it's void of the humanity that's required for making those connections. Whereas if I just show you these simple video thumbnail graphics here taken from bomb bomb videos, you immediately have more insight into who Melanie and Jesse are than if I were to show you one of their emails. And that's the power. It's all about the connection piece. I say this all the time in my trainings. The goal of video is not just to send more video. The goal of video is to get you connected with more people more often because when we connect with people, our business grows. So the first piece I want to talk about here is using video for building relationships. Now, it's not even just for building relationships, but even maintaining them. So first off, lead response. This is a powerful place to implement video into your business. But even after that first initial point of contact, sometimes it takes leads a little while before they're ready to make the decision. Video is a great way to stay face to face with them there or confirming appointments, great way to use video, or following up after a phone call or a listing. These are all ways that I see agents using video really, really effectively for that relationship piece. So I'm gonna show you this example. This is our friend, Jesse. Now, Jesse is an agent up in Canada, and this was a response to a seller lead that came in off of his own website. So Jesse had never met this person before. They had reached out requesting more information. And this is the actual video that Jesse sent in that moment. But I, what I want you to understand about this is that it's powerful because it's human. And you'll see what I mean by that. Hey there, Carmelo. How you doing? Jesse Peters here. Hope all is well. I uh, just wanted to touch base with you. Say yes, I would love to have the opportunity to uh, meet you guys. Talk about the housing market over in the River Heights area and see what your options are for summer if you're looking at uh, putting your house on the market. Uh, just, obviously, just out with my daughter right now before it starts to rain. So I will be available later tonight. You can reply to this. <laughs> you can reply to this email and uh, I'll be more than happy to set up a time for uh, for. Now, you could look at that video and say, yeah, well, the audio wasn't great. There's wind noise. His daughter stuck her face in. But again, this works because it's human. This potential seller was able to connect with Jesse just from that video. And in fact, Jesse told us that her response came within 10 minutes. She said she couldn't wait to meet him and that she was going to bring bubbles to the appointment. Powerful, right? Just from a simple video, he made the connection which also means that he got to list their home. Now, a couple quick things on this. Um, even for the clients that are currently in your sphere and in your database, this is a great opportunity to use video to connect with them and maintain that relationship. Right now, while we're all living in this new world with the pandemic, one of the best things you could do for your past clients is to show up with presence, empathy, gratitude, and service. You don't need a script. It's not complicated. All you have to do is just send a quick personal video and say, hey, I'm thinking about you. How are you? Is there anything that you need? 
What are you planning on doing with your kids for back to school? Whatever it is, right? You're just showing up with presence, empathy, gratitude, and service. And I promise you the real estate conversations will come. So a couple other things on this. Number one, your sphere is probably still having less face-to-face -face interactions than they did previously. Another thing I want to remind you of is that watching videos of human faces actually stimulates serotonin production in the brain the same way as if you were having a face-to-face -face conversation. And then the last piece, which is the most important, is that it's asynchronous, which means that you don't have to get them onto a phone call or onto a Zoom meeting or a FaceTime or anything like that. You record the video when it makes sense for you. You send it off over email or text and they get to watch it back when it makes sense for them. So I had an agent tell me recently, who's a bonbon -bon customer, that over this COVID period, he had sent 45 one-to-one -one videos to past clients and he had 18 phone calls returned. 18 relationship building conversations just from sending those simple videos. So the next place where video is really, really important, especially now, is video for transactions. One of the things that we say at BombBomb Bomb is that video lets you be there in person when you can't be there in person. Well, now in a lot of cases, we simply just cannot be there in person. So video is going to be a huge asset to your business to help you move transactions through while still maintaining a really high level of service and that face-to-face -face connection. So for example, clarity of expectations, things are different now. To be able to send a quick video to a client and let them know what to expect from the listing appointment or what will it look like to show their home right now. You can also use video for doing a physically distanced CMA. Going over market data and neighborhood comps can be really hard to do if you're not sitting at someone's kitchen table. But we actually have a screen recorder that lets you do this really, really effectively, and I'll show you what that looks like. You can also use that screen recorder for going over contracts or documents. We have a mobile app that will let you do virtual showings or walkthroughs, which are different than a listing video. You want your listing video to be highly produced, but to do a quick walkthrough for a client, the mobile app will let you do that. And you simply send it off just as easy as you would send any email or text message, and that client is gonna be able to view it. So I'm gonna show you this example of the screen recorder. This is our friend, Jimmy Burgess, and he's actually using that screen recorder to go over some market data. He's doing a CMA for one of his past clients. So let me play this video for you so you can see how easy the screen recorder makes it to both show information as well as bring your humanity and your expert insight into contracts, data, neighborhood comps, anything like that. Hey, Jimmy Burgess. Hope you're doing well. Wanted to give you an update on what's been going on at Adagio. We've had some changes there. So let me just kind of pull this in here and kind of get you to a place where you can really kind of see a little better exactly what we're looking at um, as far as in Adagio right now. Uh, one of the things, I'm pretty sure you know this, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, as far as the building numbers. And so what I want to do is, is I want to come in here and talk specifically about some of these that have sold recently in the last year to give you an update on your value to get you a better feel for where we are. So what I did is, is I just kind of broke down. Obviously, the ones that are off the water are going to be the ones south of a million. The ones on the Gulf are going to be the ones that were this higher price. Now, as you saw, Jimmy was able to toggle to another tap and go through that information really, really effectively. Let me tell you the backstory on that video, though. Jimmy does what he calls these unsolicited CMAs for his past clients because he already has their address. He simply pulls the MLS data and sends one of those off to a past client as a value add, right? Just letting them know what's happening with the value of their home. No expectations. He's not asking people if they're ready to sell. He's just saying, hey, I, as your realtor, want to let you know what's happening with your biggest investment, most likely. So Jimmy told me that he did this one time for 90 days. He did one a day to a past client for 90 days. And that resulted in 11 
million dollars in listings. So really, really effective for doing nurture as well. Now, the last area that I want to talk about in our short time today is using video for scalability. You have an opportunity to put in a little bit of work right now to build up your video library that's going to help you scale your business at a really, really high level. For example, frequently asked questions and next steps in the process. Think about how many times you have to answer the exact same question over and over. What if you could save yourself time by simply recording a quick video, explaining the answer to that question, and then have it at your fingertips the next time someone asks you that question? Really, really effective. Same thing with next steps in the process. In fact, these first two areas with FAQs and next steps in the process are areas that agents tell me that they see spoken about specifically in their reviews after transactions where customers will say, I loved the video explainer videos or I loved the way that she communicated what to expect because you're getting the benefit of that human face-to-face -face communication. They can retain that information, but you already did the work and you sent that video off in just a matter of seconds. Same thing for appointment confirmations. You can have a pre-recorded appointment confirmation that goes out with your appointment reminder or pre-recorded lead response. If you're getting leads from Zillow or Boomtown or your website or uh, pay-per-click ads, whatever it is, you can set up video autoresponders. So the First thing that happens when that lead comes in is they get to meet you in a pre-recorded video. Uh, same things for sending out happy birthdays to your past clients. You could record those happy birthday videos now and schedule them out to go out down the road. So this is the last video example I'm going to show you. And this is our friend Amy doing just that. She spent the time building up her video library so that she can communicate at a really high level in a really personal human way all through the transaction, but she's done the work ahead of time. Check this out. Hey there, thanks again so much for hiring us to sell your home and help you experience success with your real estate goals. If you're keeping track with our process, we're over here on item 10, and this is prepare the house videos. In this series, you're gonna get a number of videos that are gonna tell you about what needs to happen next. If you were with us recently, you probably got this document called, congratulations, you've hired an amazing realtor to all right, so those are just a few of the ways that I see agents using video really, really effectively in your businesses. The truth is, is that the sky is the limit. Anytime you're sitting down to write an email or a text message, I would encourage you to ask yourself, could this be communicated more effectively by me? Meaning you, not me. And if the answer is yes, then you can simply just send the video. Now, the last piece that I want to tell you about, which is very, very exciting, is that KV Core has actually uh, partnered up with BombBomb, and they are offering you video directly inside of your CRM. This is really, really exciting because now directly inside of KV Core, you can either record a video live, just like some of those live videos I showed you. Or you can also access your entire video library. So those frequently asked questions, your appointment confirmations, next steps, all of those in your library, directly accessible inside of KV Core. So this is a really, really exciting thing. I know that you guys at EXP are using KV Core. So this is an exciting launch. And I would encourage you to really, really take advantage of this. And you actually have two options. You have core video, which is completely free to any KV core users. Now there's limitations on it, but you can jump in there, try core video and see how it works in your business, as well as a premium paid option that's going to give you unlimited video messages, the video library, the ability to send in mass, the mobile app, as well as our Chrome extension. So I hope that you guys found this informational. I hope that you are excited 
about some of the ways that video is really, really going to help you build relationships more effectively, maintain relationships, move transactions through at a really human high level, as well as scale your business and save you some time. So that's all I got, Rick. Back to you. Enjoy the rest of the summit, guys, and let us know how we can help. Was I right? Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Alicia Baruti. That was great for everybody, especially me. I took lots of notes, and I realized by listening to you where my strengths are and where my weaknesses, mostly weaknesses, in the video arena. Now, I hope that you all that were listening were paying attention and, and finding out something that you could use. In addition, you've gotta to remember to reach out to BombBomb Bomb and get to be part of their family and their program because it's incredible. The, re the help is amazing, uh, the support, and of course, the platform itself is incredible. So Alicia, thank you so much, and I hope that you will come back and see us all again. Either way, I'll be looking for chances to watch you speak on other platforms. Thanks so much, let's go on.
looking forward to listening to this young man, and I'll tell you why. I read his bio, and I was like, why do I not know this guy? Let me tell you something. He started in the real estate business with his dad at 16 years old. When he really started to sell after being legally licensed, by 19 years old, he'd done like 360,000 in commissioned income in like a 15 month period. Then he went on, get this, he went on to speak to over 10,000 agents over the next year and a half, visiting 35 different cities. Oh my gosh, he's done so much. And today he runs his own company. I, I mean, I got to think that the shoes I'm wearing are older than him and he's done so much in his career. So while I've never heard him speak, I am, I'm just so looking forward to hearing the subject matter because virtual assistants and this gentleman's knowledge of them together, it's got to be life changing. So let's remember, get out your pen, get out your pad, pay attention, make sure that you decide you're going to get something that will help you. I'm so looking forward to hearing Mr. Justin Nelson. Hey, thanks, Rick. I really appreciate it. As always, I appreciate you having me on. Um, just wanted to say thank you guys so much. Thank you to Rick. Thank you to the people that invited me on here to speak. So I'm super excited to have you guys here live today um, about one of the topics I am super passionate about. I know Rick just gave a little bit of an intro for myself, but just to kind of dive deep and give you guys a 30 second abbreviation of who I am and where I've come from. You know, I got into the real estate business at 19 years old, um, ended up helping grow a team to over 15 plus agents, opened expansion sites, um, ended up traveling in 2019 to about 35 states and 135 different locations. Um, my goal was to teach it social media strategies to as many real estate agents across the country and share one of my passions, which is how to help real estate agents leverage their business. I've never sought, stopped fully selling real estate in that time. Um, now what most people know me for is owning and running Sphere Rocket Virtual Assistant. So that kind of leads us into our topic today. Uh, I can't wait to share this with you guys. This is one of my biggest passions. Now this topic is about virtual assistants, but it's really about any type of assistant or any type of leverage. So most people watching this are probably in the real estate space. You're getting into the real estate space. Maybe you're in just the real estate industry, whether it's mortgage. I don't know exactly where you're coming from, but I know a majority of you guys are real estate agents. And at the end of the day, when I had the opportunity to travel across the nation and meet 10,000 real estate agents live, one of the biggest things that I saw is real estate agents are one of the industries where there's like this thing that we like to be solo entrepreneurs. Now, some of you guys watching this have big teams, right? Some of you guys are are watching this or solo agents, doesn't matter where you are in the journey, we still like to do a lot of things on our own. So I'm gonna kind of start off with a few numbers just to get us kicked off. If your goal, and I know we're all across different markets here, if your goal, which is like the, you know, the fictitious goal that every single real estate agent ever wants to hit when they first get into the business is six figures. Justin, I want to hit $100,000. Well, if you were to break down the math and you were to say, Justin, in a perfect world, I want to make $100,000. I want to only work 40 hours a week because I got kids. I have a family. I got into this business to be able to build a business where I can still have a life. Your dollar per hour is about 50 to $55 per hour. So if you're making six figures, your hourly wage is between 50 and $55 an hour. And so as I traveled the nation, when I surveyed 10,000 students, 98% of real estate agents that I surveyed did not have an assistant. And I, so I asked, why do you guys not have an assistant? And I always heard, well, my coach says that I'm not ready for an assistant yet, right? I always heard, you know, I'm not organized enough for a full-time assistant. I heard, Justin, my lifestyle is so sporadic that I, I can't be in the office, you know, to be able to take care, you know, of an assistant. I heard, Justin, I'm so busy, I don't even know what an assistant would do for me. And so for a lot of us watching this, you know, you might be in the place in your business where you're like, should I get an assistant? But oh wait, we're also in the middle of this COVID world. Am I ready? You know, what's that look like? And if you guys are watching this, we're obviously doing a virtual, you know, webinar type series where you're getting all these awesome, great speakers coming at you live. And 
Over the last six months, we've really proven that a lot of things can be done virtually that you never thought could be done virtually. And so when I started to survey those 10,000 students and I found those that didn't have assistance and those that had assistance, we found just this massive gap. And that's where my company, Sphere Rocket Virtual Assistance, was founded. And so I really want to go through a few of those excuses that we hear people say when it comes to assistance. Like, why, why do you not have one and what are all the excuses? So the number one thing I heard is, Justin, I don't even know what a virtual assistant could do for me. But the same, you know, person would come to me and go, Justin, I'm so swamped. I don't want to deal with contracts. I don't want to deal with my social media. Or I would hear, hey, I'm not very good at social media. Or, hey, you know, I'm tired of scheduling showings. Or, hey, Justin, you know, I'm in a market where we have a lot of listings and the listings go fast and I get 50 plus offers. And, you know, every single one of my sellers is wanting to, you know, find out every single part of every single showing. I'm sure we've all had that, right? Every time you get a showing, 10 minutes later, your seller's like, dude, we get feedback. Did we get feedback? And we got buyer's agents now more than ever that are becoming lazier and lazier because, and, and a lot of it's not even their fault. They're having to show 20, 30, 40 properties on a weekend sometimes. So getting that feedback is a challenge. So, you know, a lot of agents are like, cool, you can have your, you know, People do that. And so when we look at virtual assistants, I look at your business and one challenge I have you to, I challenge you to do right now is to write down everything that you do in your business that you either don't like or is under $50 per hour. If you could hire someone else out to do it for under $50 an hour, you should be not doing it. So I just want to go through the top 10 things that we see people leveraging their business out. And then we're going to go through the next hurdle of, well, Justin, I can't afford a full-time assistant yet because my income goes up and down like this because we're in a commission-based business. I get that. I've been there. So number one, social media. A lot of real estate agents know, especially in this day and age, that social media is critical. You might even know how to do it, but it's just the consistency piece that kills you. So if you had an assistant, ask yourself, if you had an assistant to focus on your social media every single day, even if they just made one post on LinkedIn, one post on Facebook, one post on Twitter, one post on Instagram, and they went through your friends list and they liked all the posts on the feed, would that put you in a better place than you are today? Oh, and they took care of your business pages. Oh, and they managed all the messages coming in and out. Oh, and then they went out and sought out the post and said, oh, Sally's you know, grandmother died. I'm going to send them a card on your behalf. Even if it's something as simple as that, could an assistant move your business forward if that's all they did on social media? Could you move your business forward if you're taking a lot of listings or showing a lot of buyers if you had an assistant to track down every piece of feedback? If you had an assistant to help you schedule every single showing? If you had an assistant to monitor your voicemails, your text messages? If you had an assistant each and every morning to confirm all of the appointments that you're supposed to go on to make sure that they're actually going to show up? If you just had an assistant do those things, your quality of life would increase and the ability for your business to increase would increase as well. Now, a lot of this is just fundamental business, right? I kind of call this the dentist and attorney rule. When you go to a dentist office, think of your local dentist. Do you know a dentist that doesn't have a receptionist that probably doesn't have a clean technician on hand as well? When you go to an attorney, is it usually the attorney drafting up all the offers and contracts? And, you know, is, is it the attorney you know, that is sitting there handling all your conversations. No, a lot of the times it's hard to even get to that attorney because in those worlds, even more than the real estate world, for some reason, they understand that it's a business and not a solar entrepreneurial type business. And so when we look across, why do real estate agents not have a business? We kind of talked about some of the things that um, a virtual assistant can do for you. And I actually provided a guide for you. You guys will get that um, after, you know, as a thank you gift for attending today. I have an 80 page guide that I'm going to give you that talks about every single thing that we ever see a virtual assistant do for you. So when we kind of move into the next step is, okay, I can just not get it. I, I'm a sole entrepreneur now, or maybe I have a small team and I have an admin already, but there's so much more with a growing team that our team can do, you know, but we're not ready on our profit and loss to bring on a new, you know, if you guys are in California, you know, your assistant may run you three, four, five, six thousand dollars a month. Um, and in other areas, you might be running three, four thousand dollars a month for an entry level assistant. And so that's a lot of money when, you know, a lot for especially for some of us just getting into the business. And so when we look at it, I'm going to challenge you right now today that everybody can afford an assistant. You know, when I got the honor to travel across the nation, the, big, the biggest excuse was I can't afford it. 
Well, whenever I got to start to mastermind with some of the top agents across the country that were doing the same production as us or that were doing way more than us, there was this secret that I found. And it was that so many of them were using virtual assistants. And I had always used virtual assistants in the way of Upwork and Fiverr. And, you know, I'd even had some on my team for a little bit, but I just never had maximized their use. And I kept seeing repetitively. I looked at the Real Trends Top 100 and I went through there and I found that so many of these people had assistants, you know, and I, what I also found was is a lot of the agents that wanted to be solo agents forever had virtual assistants. So they were on stage winning awards saying, hey, I closed a hundred deals this year as a solo agent. But what they didn't tell you, which is what I learned in the masterminds, is that they had virtual assistants. They had three, four, five, six of them. They didn't have other real estate agents on their team. And so when I say this today, I'm not trying to tell you you have to grow a big team because you definitely don't. Being an agent all by yourself without other agents on your team, you can still be highly profitable. But in order for you to scale your business and still feel like you have a life to spend with your family, you need an assistant. So I wanted to dive in a little bit into the virtual assistant world because a lot of agents just don't know that this exists. And it's because of the way our industry is set up. So most virtual assistants that you know agents across the nation pay for will range between three to five dollars an hour and so if you guys haven't ever looked into virtual assistants you know most virtual assistants for the real estate industry come out of manila philippines now in manila philippines you can get a rock solid assistant no matter what anybody tells you for three to five dollars an hour and i can tell you this i have helped several hundred agents get virtual assistance for between three and five dollars an hour that absolutely changed their world, right? Um, so I want to give you guys an example of one of the first virtual assistants that I brought into my business. And this is this is an example to show you that we could overcome all of those different things. So I was at a point in my business where I didn't have the profit and loss. You know, I was still I was way clearing six figures, but I wasn't quite ready to bring on a three, four, five thousand dollar a month assistant. And even the few times that I had tried, I had failed because the pressure was so great of making that month to month, like, you know, contribution to that person that when I found a virtual assistant, the very first one I brought on was for two dollars and fifty cents an hour. Now, if you guys are wondering, Justin, is that a good wage over there in the Philippines for a good virtual assistant? Do they speak good English? Do they have college educations? The answer is yes. $2, $3, $4 an hour is a very good income in the Philippines, no matter what anybody will tell you. Now, the reason why real estate agents don't get virtual assistance is because the way the industry is set up is that these big companies will go over to the Philippines, they will recruit a whole bunch of people and they will pay them two, three, four dollars an hour. And then they'll come to you and say, hey, if you want a virtual assistant, you need to pay us seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars an hour, which is still a massive savings. So I'll never talk bad about any virtual assistant company because that's a great model. They're, they're doing all the work on the front end and then they're bringing you a virtual assistant and they're just upcharging you for the rest of your life on it. Well, the reason why a lot of agents have never had a virtual assistant is because even then, nine, ten, twelve bucks an hour can sometimes still be a lot for a growing business. But when you look at what agents are doing to be able to scale, a lot of them are going in what we call self-sourcing. They're getting virtual assistants directly and at three to four dollars an hour. And now, you know, when I was first getting into the business and I was needing a virtual assistant, I was able to get an assistant for two dollars and fifty cents an hour which was $400 a month, $400 a month. I had a full time assistant. Now in my first year in real estate, I did about $11 million in real estate, about 33 transactions, which in our market was a lot. We had to show each buyer like 10 homes. I was in a hot color out of market. So having a full time virtual assistant in the businesses since I've grown since then have been massive. I mean, can you just stop and think for just a second on what a virtual assistant could do for you that we already kind of named and you guys will get that 70 plus page printout of all the things that they can do for you. Could you imagine having a full time person that is in your business at your call from eight to five every single day for just $400 a month. Like it's insane. And that's why I was able to grow to two assistants, three assistants, four assistants, five assistants. You know, I believe now my team and it changes every day. I have 12 virtual assistants that just work for me personally. And my payroll for all 12 virtual assistants ranges between about 3,500 and about $6,000 a month, depending on the month during bonuses. 
So I have 12 full-time assistants between $3,500 and $6,000 a month. Now you probably don't need that right now, right? You probably just need one assistant to come into your life, right? And so virtual assistance is just something that I wanted to come on here today and share with you. It's something I challenge you to look into, right? You know, um, whether you go with this company or that company or our company, it really doesn't matter. Just look into virtual assistants, learn some more about it, digest the information, because it's one of those things that's a hidden secret um, that are not enough people are talking about. And so when we looked across agents, that's kind of how I got into the business that I'm in today is I went, wow, there is such this misinformation around virtual assistants and it allows you to scale. Now, we kind of talked a little bit about the solo entrepreneur agent that's just a solo agent. A lot of you guys here might be having big teams, right? As you grow teams and scale teams, virtual assistants are a great way to retain your top talent. So a lot of you guys have this top talent on your team and you're like, how do I retain them? How do I keep them from going out on their own? Virtual assistants are great. Could you imagine if you have your top agent making you a few hundred thousand dollars per year, maybe they're even making you seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars per year on the splits that you get from them. Could you imagine being able to come to them and going, hey, I'm gonna give you a full-time assistant and I'm gonna pay for it. And they're gonna be a virtual assistant because the system rocks. And now you're only out four, five, six hundred dollars a month to provide your top agent more leverage to be able to grow their business. Now, the other people that may be listening to this is maybe you have an admin, right? You already have a rock star admin, but you need to scale. Maybe you're opening expansion sites. Maybe your brokerage is growing. Maybe, you know, maybe you're recruiting a lot, whatever it may be. And your admin already has everything down. But the question is now, are you ready to bring on another three to four to $5,000 a month salary admin? Or does that admin just need help and you can make her even more of a rock star just giving her help? So we see a lot of people going to the virtual assistant world now because their admin are already working virtually. Over the last six months, I heard a good quote last week. It says, everybody's a virtual assistant, right? Everybody right now for the most part is a virtual assistant. Between you and your team member that you might be masterminding with, most likely you're doing it, you're most likely doing it virtually, right? And so now whether someone's here or a thousand miles away, it really doesn't matter. And I will tell you, the virtual assistant industry, our business is up 75% year over year just during COVID because people are understanding the power of getting assistance. Now, most people that are kind of realizing this are taking fire and absolutely growing their business. So today's whole thing for me to bring to you guys was not to convince you that you need an assistant, not to convince you that you need one tomorrow or need one in five years or nothing like that. My goal was just to bring light, this little attention that a lot of us kind of store in the back of our mind because we're used to companies that will go get assistance for two to three to $4 an hour and they upcharge you nine to 10, they charge you a 12 month contract. So then for some reason, us as real estate agents, we just don't even consider it, right? We don't even consider the virtual assistant world. So just wanted to challenge you guys to think about that. Now, if you guys ever need help, we our company was founded. We don't have the contracts. We don't do the upcharges. We are a self-placement helping company, which is a very unique space. So if you guys ever need help with that, you can just go to spherocketva.com, which will also be in that 70-page packet. You're more than welcome to schedule a time and ask me questions, mastermind about you know what virtual assistants are. Um, for anybody that jumps on a call with me, it's not a sales call. I just want to learn more about your business and be able to answer any questions you have about the virtual assistant world. Maybe you already have virtual assistants. You just want to maximize their use. I would love to chat with you. I'd love to be able to give you guys information. So final takeaway here before I give it back to Rick, um, just think about virtual assistants. If you're feeling overwhelmed, if you feel like you want more time back with your family, if you feel like there's pieces of your business that are floundering and you're just not even touching them, if there's pieces of your business that are just falling through the cracks because you're, you know, you're kind of halfway doing them, should I say, virtual assistance is definitely something you should look into, get more knowledgeable about. And uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, Sphere Rocket VA, that guy that I gave you is We'll walk you through all 80 pages of what virtual assistants are, how they work, and who does and doesn't need them. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that watched today. Rick, I'm going to pass it back to you. And guys, I can't wait for you guys to listen to the next speaker. It is absolutely a great rock star, and you guys are going to enjoy it. Back to you, Rick. Okay, it wasn't just me, right? Incredible, incredible. So uh, first, I love how fast he talked because I got a lot of information and the content, 
Now, I gotta tell you, he doesn't know this, but he's definitely gonna hear from me and my personal assistant because we are going to use him and his product without a doubt because of the way he runs it and his, and his general outlook at the importance of virtual assistants and building leverage into your business, amazing. So I hope you took lots of notes. I hope you'll reach out to Justin and his company, Sphere Rocket VA, because I'm telling you, it'll be worth it. Thanks so much, Justin. I hope to hear you a lot more often and see you more soon. Take care. All right, super pumped about introducing our next speaker, and there's lots of reasons why. I only recently got to meet him a little over a year and a half ago in person, and the only time I've seen him speak is on video, never in person. And while today is kind of virtual, I am so excited about hearing him live. And I'll tell you that this gentleman, Michael Hellickson, has a, a bio that reads like who's who in the world of real estate. The first thing I wanna say, and I think this is important to know, is at one point he was the number one real estate agent team in the entire United States. Like, how many people can say that? Believe me, not many. He was selling well over 100 homes a month, okay? I can remember several times in my career where I sold over 100 homes in a year. There are no times when I got even close to 100 homes in a month. Uh, he has and owns one of the most sought after coaching companies in the United States and Canada called Club Wealth. And they have incredible results and they have a guarantee even that double your income or your money back. So, I mean, there's so much I can say about them that it, I could go on forever, but I think it's better if we just allow me to stop and we move on to getting to hear this gentleman who's gonna bring so much wisdom and so much common sense to our real estate business. So I'm super excited that he was willing to help us out and come on and speak to all of us. So please give it up and take incredible notes for Michael Hellickson. We got Zillow, we got high buyers, we got referral based business shrinking every year, year over year, all these forces coming after your commission. You've got listing agents that are offering low commissions because there's virtually no inventory right now. So they're offering super low commissions to buyer agents who have to work with more and more and more buyers putting in more and more and more offers to even get one accepted because of, there's so many multiple offers on each property right now. Then factor in COVID, oh my God, gosh, COVID's going to destroy the industry. At least that's what we're being, you know, we're, we're being told at one point. It's just chaos out there. Now we've got to deal with masks and shutdowns and, and social distancing and all this virtual appointments and virtual showings and virtual listing appointments, all this other stuff. It's cre freaking chaos out there right now for those that are unable to find the opportunity in the chaos. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you how with five simple habits, you can not only find the opportunity in the chaos, but you can also take your game not only beyond where it is now, but to a level that will help you sustain when the market actually does shift, which we know is going to happen sometime in the next 12 to 18 months. You're going to see a market shift. It's inevitable. It has to happen and you need to be prepared for it. So let's talk about what that looks like. All right, first and foremost, let's talk about these five habits that you have to master. All right, listen, the first one is very simple. And if you don't master these three things, it doesn't matter what business you're in, doesn't matter what industry you're in, doesn't matter what level you're performing at right now, if you want to continue to perform at a high level or you want to begin to perform at a high level, whether you wanna do your first or next 100 transactions, you need to master these five things. First and foremost is lead generation. Now grab a pen, you need to be writing this down. I'm gonna tell you about lead generation and then I'm gonna tell you about the next four. But you need to make sure you've got a pen and you're writing this down because if you don't write it down, you'll be lucky to retain 4% of what I tell you today. If you'll write it down, take really good notes with pen and paper, you'll retain between eight and 12%. When you write it down and you teach someone else what I'm going to teach you today, you'll retain between 18 and 21%. So write it down and teach someone else what I'm gonna teach you right now. Lead generation, let's talk about this for a moment. There's lots and lots of different lead sources out there. In fact, in real estate today, there's over 2,000 different lead sources in real estate today. It's insane how many lead sources there are in real estate today. So how do you pick the best ones? Well, listen, even at Club Wealth, you know, we're the number one coaching company in the team and broker space. We don't even use all 2,000 of them. What we've done is we've narrowed it down to about our best 109 lead sources that we recommend to our clients. 
understand this. There's no secret sauce to the lead sources. The key is you've got to figure out what's going to work for you. What are you really going to work with? What are you going to implement at a high level? And what are you going to dial in? Understand that if you want to make a solid six figure income, write this down, six figures in real estate, net income, not gross. Nobody cares about gross. It's all about net, right? But if you want to make a solid six figure net income selling real estate today, you really want to have, and I'm talking consistently over all markets, regardless of what the economy is doing, regardless of what the industry is doing, consistently, you're going to want to see around 10 to 12 lead sources that you have actively sending you leads all the time. Now, as soon as I say this, people always jump up and say, oh, but Michael, I do all my business by referral. Well, good for you. That means that you suck at marketing, right? No, I'm just kidding. Understand this though. Referrals are great. I love referrals. But what you have to understand is referral-based business is not enough. Watch this. The National Association of Realtors studies this every year. And did you know that as recently as six years ago that, that the average real estate agent was getting 61% of their business from sphere of influence, repeat clients, past clients, that sort of thing, and referrals. We'll call it all sphere of influence, 61%. Just four years later, that number had dropped to 44%. I want you to think about that. That's a massive shift. What's really scary is last year, we don't have last year's numbers yet, but what we're hearing is that they're in the 30s. 30s, so they've almost been cut in half. Why is this? If you're delivering great service, if you're taking care of people, why aren't you getting more referrals? Well, here's why. Again, National Association of Realtors tells us that 92% of all buyers start their search online. And of those, watch this, 92% start their search online. Of those, 72% worked with the first agent they came in contact with. Now think about that. 72% worked with the first person they came in contact with. Have you ever thought about, gosh, how did that agent, you've, you've probably had a cross sale with somebody at some point in time. And you've thought, why would anybody choose that knucklehead as their agent? Right? Have you ever thought that? I've been in those shoes. I've thought that at times. And guess what? Here's why. Because 72% of the people out there are going to work with the first agent they come in contact with. They're not going to go to the effort of interviewing a bunch of different agents. So guess what? If all you do is increase your online person, you know, profile, you know, your, your online lead sources, and you show up and you don't drop the ball on the next two habits I'm going to share with you, then guess what? You will actually get 72% of that business if you just don't screw it up. So here's the key, and assuming you're the first person to contact them at that point. Now, understand that you need more lead sources. I'm going to recommend that you add at least one new lead source per quarter. Again, I want you to increase your referral based business, but as a, as a percentage of your overall business, I actually want that to be a smaller percentage of your overall business so that even though the number of referral transactions is continually going up, you're also bringing in more business from these other sources. Why is that? Because we want to make sure that we outsmart the market, right? We want to make sure that no matter what the economy is doing, no matter what the market's doing, we always have lots of leads coming in so that we can run an effective business. So I'm not going to go into all the different lead sources. When we get done uh, toward the end of my presentation here, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 17 of my best uh, 109 lead sources that we recommend to our clients all the time. But let's go on to habit number two before I do that. Habit number two is once I've got lead generation dialed in and I'm really crushing it at a high level. And again, you don't have to be a cold caller. You don't have to be a referral based person. You don't have to be a social media person. You can be any number of different things and any combination of different things to really dial this in. But let's just assume that I get leads that come in, right? Once a lead comes in, I have to implement habit number two. And this is mission critical. And it's interesting because Zillow and Realtor.com and other companies like them figured out that real estate agents are terrible by and large at lead generation. And that's how these companies came into existence, right? What did they do? They went out, they took our listings, they used that data to go market it to the general public. They brought in leads. Then they sold us the leads that came from our data to begin with. And we wonder why they even exist and we get frustrated with their existence. Well, listen, that said, they figured out that there's only one thing that we're worse at than lead generation, and that's lead follow-up. And so now they've implemented companies within their companies to solve those issues, right? You've got uh, Zillow Concierge and you've got OpCity, right? That now have 
handled a lot of this follow-up process for agents. Well, guess what? That creates even greater downward pressure on your commission. That's costing you money. That's costing you opportunity as well, because what it does is it puts more and more control in their hands and takes more and more control away from you, which means you're at the mercy of these big companies. Well, guess what? If you want to take back control, you want to take control of your destiny, you've got to learn to lead generate and to follow up with those leads appropriately. So let's talk about follow up. There's a couple of things that are very important with follow-up. Number one is speed to lead. You got to get to that lead quickly. Number two is tenacity of follow-up. I have to follow up consistently over a long period of time in multiple ways in order to get this person to do business with me. So let's talk first about speed to lead. How fast do I have to get to that lead? Well, I'm here to tell you, years ago, Harvard Business Review did a study that found that if we get to a lead and it takes us more than five minutes to respond to that lead, our chances of connecting with that person dropped by 900%. Well, that was over five years ago. So we know that we've got to get to them within the five minutes, right? No longer can we wait an hour, two hours, whatever. But five minutes is now too long. We did an informal study, uh, and this was a couple years ago, with one of our ISAs on one of the teams that we coach. Uh, this ISA's name was Benson. He was on the Jesse Zagorski team down in San Diego, California. Uh, and I had a conversation with Benson. I said, Benson, for the next two weeks, I want you to make sure that when a lead comes in, I don't want you to look the lead up. All I want you to do is pick up the phone and call the lead. And then you can look at the lead and understand who they are as the phone is ringing. So the goal being, I want you to get on the phone with each and every one of these leads within 30 seconds of them coming in. Well, Benson was very uh, obedient to this uh, request and he rock and rolled it for two weeks. And let me tell you, he tracked it all very closely. He was very good about making sure he got on the phone with these people within 30 seconds for the next two weeks. Here's what we found out. First of all, his contact rate went through the roof. He, got, he was able to get on the phone with way more of these people than ever before. Second, what we found out is that he was able to close more of these people into an appointment. Why? Because he was the first person they were talking to. And next, we found out that while he was on the phone with them during a five minute phone conversation, four to five other agents would contact that same client. Think about this for a minute. Some of you are thinking, oh, but Michael, I get exclusive leads. I don't buy shared leads. Well, guess what? There's no such thing as an exclusive lead anymore. Why? Because these people are going online to multiple different places. They're on Zillow, they're on realtor.com, they're on your website, they're on so-and-so's website, they're all over the place and they're filling out forms on several of these sites because they wanna get the information about that house that they're looking at, right? So guess what? They're being contacted by lots of agents. So here's one of the things that you can do. We also know that most agents will not follow up with someone beyond the first or even second phone call at best. So what does that mean? If that person calls them up, right? So uh, the typical agent gets a lead, they call that lead and they don't get a hold of that lead right away. The chances are overwhelming that that agent is never going to call that lead again. So you're limiting a lot of those people right there. What can you do to enhance this? Well, if we know that a lot of those calls happen in that first five minutes, keep the client on the phone for five minutes, because here's what we know. Agent calls the client, they get a voicemail. We know they're not going to follow up again. And if I've done a good job building rapport with that client over the phone, the client's not going to call the agent again either. Why? Because I've taken care of their needs and I've built great rapport with them. This is one of the keys to being successful with lead generation and lead follow-up today. All right. Now, so we talk about speed to lead. We got to get that time under 30 seconds. Number one agent in the country right now is a guy named Robert Slack. He'll do about 6,000 transactions this year. Guy spends over, I think he's going to spend over, I want to say the number is 12 million. I could be wrong about that number, but I want to say it's about $12 million uh, in realtor.com leads this year. It's a huge number. It's a crazy number. Uh, but here's what's interesting about Robert and his team. Their speed to lead. I was impressed when he told me that it was at 16 seconds. Uh, from the time a lead comes in till the time they are dialing the phone and, and have them on the phone. He's actually got that down now to somewhere between six and eight seconds. That's fast. That's insane. It takes, it takes longer to, get, to, to go through an eight second ride on a freaking Bronco at the rodeo than it does for him to get on, on a call with a client. That's how fast it is. So what I'm telling you is you got to get your speed to lead up. Now let's talk about how we follow up with them. There's several ways we follow up. I'm gonna give you six different follow-up mechanisms that you need to use on a regular basis, all right? Now, you're gonna call, write these down. You're gonna call, text, email. Again, that's call, text, email, 
video text, video email, and my personal favorite, you're going to Facebook stalk them. What? Yes, you need to contact them in all six of these ways because you don't know yet what their preferred method of communication is. All you know is how the lead came to you, but you want to be tenacious. You do not want to drop the ball on lead follow-up. So we want to do these six times now, or these six things. Now, how often, how frequently do we need to do this? How tenacious does our follow-up really need to be? Well, you need to follow the club wealth rule of three. Now, I'll tell you, this is going to be scary for some of you, but I will promise you this. If you'll implement the rule of three, you will have greater success in your follow-up. And we all know the fortune is in the follow-up. So here you go. Write this down. You're going to contact that lead in those six methods three times a day for the first three days, three times a week for the next three weeks, and three times a month for the next three months. Yes. Let's do this again. Three times a day for the first three days, three times a week for the next three weeks, three times a month for the next three months. Now watch, am I going to do all six of these things each of those times? No, but I'm going to do at least one and maybe even two of those things three times a day for the first three days, three times a week for the next three weeks, three times a month for the next three months. And I will promise you this, you will sell more homes if you will follow this follow-up mechanism, this follow-up philosophy, this follow-up system, if you will. All right. Now, Let's say I get really good at lead follow-up. I mean, I'm killing it. I've got my lead gen happening. I got leads coming in. I've transitioned from chasing business to attracting business, which is something we don't have time to go deep on today, but understand that's your goal. Instead of me having to pound the phones and make cold calls and fizzbos and expireds and all that chasing business kind of stuff and, you know, do an open house, all this stuff. Instead of me having to do all of that, I want to get to a point where I can attract business instead of chasing business. Well, that happens when we get good at marketing, when we get good at bringing leads in in an automated fashion. But once I get good at all that, then I've got to get good at the lead follow-up. Let's say I've gotten great at both. What happens now? I have to convert. So, so habit number three is lead conversion. I've got to get really good at lead conversion. What does that look like? What does that mean? Well, first I've got to convert a lead to an appointment. Well, Michael, what does that really mean? Well, here's the problem. Most agents really don't understand how to convert a lead to an appointment. And frankly, as an industry, we kind of suck at it. You know, in fact, I would go so far as to say that drug dealers by and large are better at lead, at lead conversion than real estate agents. And that's terrible because I mean, we're talking about a group of people whose product literally kills their client, whose product can get them arrested. I mean, this is craziness. Why are these drug dealers so much better at conversion than we are? Because guess what they know that most real estate agents don't? Write this down. Here's the lesson you can learn, though. Probably the only positive thing that you can learn from a drug dealer. Here you go. First one's free, then you got to pay. Write that down again. First one's free, then you got to pay. What the heck? So what they understand is they give you a little taste, they get you hooked on their product, and then you got to pay. Well, how does that apply to real estate? Listen, if somebody calls you up and they want to see a house, show them the freaking house right? Oh, but Michael, what about COVID? I'm going to, you know, we're going to all get sick. Take precautions, do the right things, follow your local and state guidelines, make sure you're in harmony with what the CDC recommends, do those things. Yes, but be aggressive with the process. Set the freaking appointment. Don't sit on your laurels waiting for business to come to you. You've got to go get it. So, your chance to get someone hooked on your product. Your product, by the way, is not the house. You are your product. How is someone going to get hooked on you if they don't get to experience you? So you need to get voice to voice and face to face with as many people as possible, as quickly as possible, as often as possible. So the goal here is set the appointment. So same thing on a listing appointment. There's some really bad advice being given by, by some real estate coaches out there. Well, they'll tell you that, Hey, look, uh, unless, unless the person is an eight, nine, or a 10 on the motivation scale, uh, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to list their house, I'm not going to go on the appointment. And that's terrible advice. You, you know, or, or how about the advice of, oh, I'm going to role play like crazy, and then I'm going to get really, really good at my scripts and dialogues. Then when I go on an appointment, I'll crush it. No, no. You want to get really good at role playing? Go on more freaking appointments. You want to get really good at your scripts and dialogues? Be face-to-face with more buyers and sellers. That's how you get better. 
Can you practice? Can you role play outside of that? Sure, of course you can. But listen, you've got to be in front of real people that have homes to buy and have homes to sell. That's who you need to be in front of because that's the real scenario. So set more appointments that'll put you in that position. And by the way, if someone has a pulse and they got a house to sell, get out there and go look at the house. You need to be Jerry freaking McGuire in their living room. Watch this. A sign in the yard beats a sign in the car every time. So often I hear from agents, oh, but Michael, I only want to take listings that are at least this price point. Or, oh, but Michael, I don't list fixer uppers. Or, oh, but Michael, I'm not going to list it if the seller wants to overprice the house. Or, oh, but Michael, I'm not going to list it if all the stars don't align and it falls within my perfection of, you know, what I consider to be perfection on this listing. Listen, here's the deal. You take every listing and you take it now. When in doubt, refer to rule number one. Again, take every listing and take it now. Because again, a sign in the yard beats a sign in the car. At one point in time, I had 750 listings in active and pending status. How many buyer leads do you think I was buying then? Zero. You want to know why? Because I had so many buyer leads coming in from my listings. I and my team could not possibly keep up with the volume of buyer leads we had coming in that we didn't even have to pay for Start with that paradigm shift. Start with that line of thinking. And now let's talk about some of those lead sources I promised you, all right? So I want you to grab your phone right now. Grab your phone, hold it up. Everybody's got a text messaging application on their phone, right? So open up your text messaging application. I'm gonna give you right now 17 of my best lead sources. Then I'm gonna share with you two of the very best scripts that you can ever use at any level in your business. The two scripts that have made literally made me millions of dollars. They're super easy, they're one-liners, and they will help you close more business than ever. Before I do that, here's those lead sources. I want you to send a text to the following number and do it right now. If you do it right now, in fact, instead of 17, if you do this right now while we're on the webinar, I will literally give you 31 of my best lead sources. If you wait until after, I'll still give you the 17, but those of you that take action right now, I'll give you 31. So here you go, 727-287-5993. So that's the number you're gonna to text to that number. You're gonna send a text message to 727-287-5993 and here's the words that you're gonna send them. Look behind me, club wealth, okay? I want you to send two words, club wealth. I want you to send the words club wealth to 727-287-5993. Do it right now and I will send you 31 of our best lead sources. All right, now check this out. I'm gonna give you those two scripts. The best follow-up script ever and the best closing script ever. I promise you these will take your game to another level. All right, when I'm following up with people, the worst thing you can do is call them up and say, so are you ready to sell yet? Or so are you ready to buy yet? Like that's so self-serving, right? All they hear in their mind is they're a paycheck to you. Stop doing that. That's almost as bad as calling people up and saying, oh, by the way, if you were buying or selling a home or had a friend or family member who was day, I have a realtor you'd refer them to. Oh my gosh, that's so self-serving. Stop using that lame script. All right, listen, here's the follow-up script. All you got to do when you call them up, I don't care if it's a buyer or a seller, super simple. Call them up and simply say this. Hey, Susie, it's Michael. I just wanted to give you a quick call and make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end right? Super easy. And guess what Susie says every time? Oh, no, no, no. It's not you, Michael. It's me. It's like that girl in high school, right? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. But seriously, that, that changes you from being a sleazy salesperson. And now their perception of you is, hey, wait a minute. That's a servant who cares. That's how we want to position ourselves as someone who genuinely cares about them. And by the way, we actually do need to care about them to, to effectively position ourselves that way. All right. I promise you that script works every time. They love it. It really, and it's honest, it's genuine, it's authentic. It's a great script. Start practicing that. Again, I'll give it to you one more time. I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball on my end. All right, now I'm going to give you the world's greatest closing script and then I'm going to wrap up. It's so simple. I get done with my appointment. It doesn't matter if it's a buyer appointment or a seller appointment. I have one line that I use every time and it works so well. If I've done my job, if I've positioned the property or if I've positioned myself, if it's a listing appointment, if I've explained properly, if I've answered their questions properly, if I've, if I've set their expectations properly, if I've delivered on everything so that now they're ready to go. If I built you know, that relationship on trust, so I've built rapport with them, 
now I'm ready to go for my close. All I simply say, now watch me, you gotta look me in the eye when I do this. All I simply say is, are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? And you'll notice I'm shaking my head back and forth. It is literally physiologically next to impossible for them to say, oh yeah, I got tons of questions. They will literally, while you are looking them in the eye, shaking your head back and forth saying, are there any other questions before we get started in the paperwork? Guess what? They will do the same thing. They will naturally shake their head back and forth and they will say, well, no. Fantastic. All right. And then you go into the paperwork. Now watch this. Why do they do that? What, fit, what, what law may, creates this? What forces them to do this? Well, it's the laws of psychology, right? It's a neuro-linguistic programming technique. Understand this. Your subconscious mind is far more powerful than your conscious mind and cannot tell the difference between reality and what you tell it to believe. So when you are shaking your head back and forth, they are naturally compelled to do the same. And when you nod your head up and down, guess what? They are naturally compelled to do the same. So again, make sure you use that closing line. So the two scripts are, are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? And are there any, I'm sorry, are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork? And I just want to make sure I'm not dropping the ball in my end. There you go. My name is Michael Hellickson. I'm one of the coaches here at Club Wealth. Grab those lead sources, send that text message, and we'll say if you've already sent it, then you should have received a message that has uh, your, your information on how you can get the 37 free. We're going to give them to you for free. And by the way, most of those lead sources don't cost you a dime unless you actually sell a house. Uh, and some of them don't cost you a dime at all. But uh, the 31 lead sources will be on their way. And uh, if you haven't done so already, jump into our Facebook group. Go to uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash club wealth and uh, ask me some questions there. You can engage with me there. I'd love to personally help you out uh, and answer your questions and help you wherever I can. Take care, everybody. Thanks a lot. Wow. Wow. Like, okay. So first, the way he started that, didn't that just wake you right up and then get you to grab your notes and go, oh my gosh, I don't want to miss anything he said. I think I took four or five pages of notes. So what I'm going to challenge you to do is to pretend like I can hear you right now and start thinking about the three things you most want to use from everything he talked about. There's so much. I'm literally going to ask about the recording of that so that I can watch it over and over again. Like hopefully they'll, there'll be a way for me to watch this entire event over again, me personally, because even after 40 years of selling real estate, I got to keep learning. And so much of what Michael said can apply to just changing the very results of what we're doing right now on a daily basis. Michael Hellickson, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, that was incredible. So much energy, so much great information that we can apply immediately. Like this stuff, you don't even need to wait. Just do the basic common sense things. The amount of information just around your, your talk about uh, the speed to the lead, the calling back, and the, you know, you threw in a couple of like uh, comedy analogies there that really made me realize wow, we're still not doing as good as we can. So I know this is a long ending to this, but I gotta tell you, Michael, that was incredible. And we're so blessed to have had you on the show. And I personally look forward to seeing you in person again one time soon. Thanks again, Michael Hellickson. And I hope you all will remember to look out for him in the future. Hello, I'm Ryan Dorman with our home loan department. We help thousands of people every year with their home loan needs. And it's not just because of our low rates and low fees. It's about our people, our culture, and our dedication to serving our members. Let's go behind the scenes and see what our team is all about. We have a lot of volume and we have a lot of loans that we're doing all the time. So everybody's working together for one common goal, which is to serve our membership. We have a great mortgage team. There's nothing better than helping somebody get into a home. The credit union it seems more like a family. You know, we keep getting bigger and bigger, but we still try to keep that family feel. We just create such a good atmosphere here, so even when our membership comes in, they can see it as well. It's the overall culture from top to bottom. We have a very caring and giving atmosphere here. We really want to be involved in our community. We have thousands of dollars we give away in charity. So you'll see us at a lot of different things. Days fly by here. There's never enough time in the day. We're able to help a huge number of people. Before I came to Green State, I was helping about 50 home buyers a year, and last year I helped almost 200. 
Green State helps the whole community when we enter into a market because we're offering low rates and other banks and credit unions are striving to match or beat our interest rate. One of the things that Mel Foster loves about the relationship with Green State is that they look at each person on an individual basis. Sometimes there's things that are outside the box. Somebody that has a student loan or someone in the medical field and they can make decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. We try to be the leaders in the market, so we're always looking for innovative ways to stay ahead of the curve and make sure that we're not the followers, we're the leaders. Are we always going to be the lowest? No, somebody can always undercut us, but not only are they going to get awesome rates, awesome fees, they're going to get a tremendous service, and we're going to get it done in a timely fashion. So that's where I think our value that we offer as a whole, it's going to be hard to top that. On the mortgage side, you know, our goal is not only to have them get into a home, but also, again, to make them financially healthy. And what I mean by that is saving them money where they may have not thought it was important. One of the things that I like is the flexibility that we have to kind of get outside the standard conventional box, the black and white kind of yes or no mentality, and actually sit down and get to know a member, get to know what their long-term, short-term financial goals are. A mortgage will be somebody's top one, two, three largest financial transactions they'll ever be a part of. And so it is really, really rewarding. It's really fun when I'm driving through neighborhoods with my kids. You see all the houses that you've helped people make their home. It's, it's awesome. for our next speaker and I'm super pumped about introducing him because I've gotten to know him personally over the last three years and I was really excited when he agreed to be one of our speakers today. Now, you're gonna start to notice a trend here. Everybody that's speaking today comes from an incredible background of real estate knowledge and expertise. Now, our next speaker is Mike Bjorkman. He's been in real estate just about 30 years, just a little under 30 years, and, and what he's done has been incredible. He's sold over 4,500 homes. He's a property manager, uh, he owns a property management company that manages over 600 homes. He's been a, you know, a real estate broker, an owner of offices. He owned a bunch of home smart offices and had three, 400 agents at one time. And he's a very well-renowned coach and speaker and trainer. Now, I gotta tell you, the best thing for me to do is to shut up and let him get started because listening to him and his inspiration, he has just such a base of knowledge that listening to him helps you to realize that if I just follow what he says, things will be better in my real estate business and in my life. So without further ado, let's welcome Mike Bjorkman. 
Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mike Bjorkman. Rick, thank you for that awesome introduction, man. I love you. You guys are so stoked to have all these amazing coaches and speakers on this event. You guys, this is one of the best events I've seen the lineup in a long time. So you're super excited. So my job today, I've been asked to talk about in 18 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it is, talk about listing presentations over the computer. Zoom specifically is the easiest one. Most people obviously nowadays know how to use it. Check this out, you guys. It's really important that you have to understand. I've been doing this since I started property management back in 2007. As soon as GoToMeeting came out and all that, I realized that my clients were all over the nation, but I still wanted to show them a market plan. I still wanted to show them everything we did to get homes rented or sold. So I've been using that. Over the years, People have always said, hey, Mike, you're just like kind of inconsiderate. You're lazy. You won't even go to the home. Let's face it, you guys. You got to get this through your head. Your clients don't want to see you. If they're really amiable, maybe, but most of the time they're busy. They're changing diapers. They got crap going on, and now we have COVID, so they don't want to see you. So the, the idea is to basically just say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, let's jump on a quick Zoom. Let's see if we're a good fit for each other. Let's get to know each other. I'm going to go through some marketing. If you like the marketing, I'm going to go through some pricing. If you like the pricing, we're going to put your home on the market. And all we have to do is everything digitally, electronically. I could pick up a key at my leisure or one of my staff members. We can go ahead and go from there. It's a really simple thing, you guys. Don't overthink it. I promise you it's easy. I do it all the time. Um, probably hundreds of them by now, actually. So I also was asked to talk about virtual open houses. I'm going to be really straight to the point on this, you guys. You don't need to do these crazy FaceTimes and all this stupid stuff. You need a very nice professional video. If you're going to send it to somebody, and if you want to get crazy, take 30 more seconds and put it in bomb bomb or do a little editor on your phone and just say, hey, Mr. Smith, that's Mike Bjorkman. I wanted to make sure you saw a few things in this video that I'm going to send you. Number one, notice the view. Number two, notice the privacy. Number three, See how big this master bedroom is. Number four, look at this RV parking. Just make sure you see those points. Here's the video. Afterwards, call me. Let's talk about it. That's all you have to do. Send it to him. And if you feel like you need to do that live, do a Zoom. Do a Zoom. Play your virtual tour. I'm going to share with you my screen real quick and show you guys how this is so simple. And again, don't overthink it. It's not a big deal. So here is my Team Bjorkman website, right? Um, and here you click on buy, go to virtual tours. Now, if you're doing things correctly, you're going to have a Matterport or an iGuide or any some crazy new fabulous um, uh, 3D tour, right? So we can actually push these on play. People could look at the house, walk through the house. It's so simple, you guys. It's, it's <laughs> I suck at doing this, but... You don't have to overthink virtual tours either. They're very simple to walk through the house. And why can't I get this? There we go. So, I mean, you could zoom in and you could see nail holes, right? Now that's probably not how it would initiate that particular tour, but I just wanna show you guys, if you're not doing eye guides or Matterports, you need to start doing that because people can see every crack of this house this way, right? Also, they can click here on the floor plan and morph or zoom or whatever you want to call it to the different rooms. And they can see that it's very handy for the buyer. And I would also recommend doing this live over Zoom. And then down below on our, our single property websites, you could use Rella, Tour Factory, whatever you guys want to use, whatever's in your town, and simply hit play while they're watching and make sure it's a big screen, right? And oh, I hate when music on here but anyways you get the idea here's the virtual lines of the property here's all this and you could actually walk them through it so there's nothing more annoying than trying to be flipping a camera around back and forth what you're trying to do for a, a virtual open house is just create interest show them how beautiful the look at that i mean come on that's better than being in the house so but have your photographer your videographer go through the house slowly make sure they know uh make sure they you point out all the things that they really want to point out, but these are beautiful videos. You don't need anything more than this. Like I said, it's annoying when you're trying to flip your camera and do this weird live thing. They don't need to see that stuff, all right? So that's so simple for a virtual open house. You guys, you don't need to do any more than I promise you. So, but what I really care about is listings. I'm a listing agent, so I want to get you into that. I'm going to show you my website. It's there for the public to see. Everybody says, why do you have that on your on your public website. Well, because I want people to see it. 
So your website, I use a Squarespace site through Wellopo. If you're at EXP, we have really awesome uh, websites that come with KV Core. Uh, it doesn't even matter, but every one of these should be um, customizable. So here you click on sell on mine, go down to marketing strategy, click on that. And there's several different programs um, that you can have your virtual um your virtual presentation on. So here's mine. Uh, if you're with us, you could use Maxa. You could use pretty much anything you want or just hire somebody to do this. But remember, you guys, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, thank you for the opportunity to interview for the job of selling your home. Why don't we jump on a quick Zoom? Spend 20, 30 minutes. We're going to see if we're a good fit for each other. I'm going to go through some marketing with you. We're going to go over some pricing. And then if you feel comfortable and confident that I'm the right agent to get you the highest price in the quickest amount of time, we'll go ahead and put your home on the market then. How easy is that, you guys? And then if they say, oh, I don't want to leave a key, say, no problem. I'll have my staff drive by, put a combination lockbox on your property. Here's the combo. Throw the key on that, whatever. It's very, very rare. I haven't had that in years. But I literally just say, you know, Mr. Mrs. Smith, there's two crucial decisions you're going to make today. Number one, who and what firm is going to market your property? And number two, at what price? It's that simple. And then I usually have a little quick thing. Um, I have a much longer listing class, you guys. So make sure you follow our, our coaching and our YouTube channel, stuff like that. And I'll get it more into depth. But I like to do suggestive selling and I like to talk a little bit of NLP with them. So I'll say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, obviously you've talked to a couple different agents, right? shake your head yes and they say yeah how much have they told you your home was worth and they'll say i don't know this much and they'll say is that what they told you or is that what you want for your home right and we'll go through some pricing strategies so i know what's going on but i say fantastic this is what's going to get your home sold and i go over my market plan now you guys got to think about this it's written for all the different personality styles right it's written for the expressive it's written for the driver written for the analytical um and amiable. So there's different things on different pages. Some of this is redundant. Some of it's not. It's not that big of a deal. It's just stuff that we do anyways as real estate agents. I just put it in writing. I always use a joke when I was going up against this one agent that was really, really good. I used our little blue super lock boxes and I did a presentation on that. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, do you want to list with me? Because do you know what I can do with this lock box? Because I didn't think I could beat this other agent. So I went through all the things this little lock box could do, the tracking, showing time, all this stuff, and I got the listing. So I laugh about it. It's all presentation, right? So I go through this and I talk a lot, especially right now with this COVID thing. We talk about the aerials. We talk about the interior video. We talk about the Matterports. We really limit people going in the house. And this is about the same time where I'm going to tell them how strict we are with buyers coming through their property, hands in their pockets, wearing masks, booty, whatever the heck we're supposed to do these days. Um, but that's where we talk about the importance of that. Um, we talk a lot about social media. And this is actually at the point, too, if we had more time, I would take you to my Facebook pages and our ad campaigns and everywhere we run ads. And I would start showing them numbers. And I say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, I'm sure you talk to an agent that might post their home on their social media, but that's not really getting a home sold. We got to drive traffic and we got to do this, that, and the other. And I'll show them how many tens of thousands of views we get. So I'll jump right over to Facebook right from here. Then I jump into pay-per-click and things that we do to buy ads. And the reason I do this is because no other agents talk about this at listing appointments. I'll actually go into my Ylopo, into my Firepoint CRM, and I'll say, listen, I'm going to put your home's criteria in here. Let's see how many active, not buyers, we have but active buyers that have logged in in the last 30 days looking for a home of your price range. I pull that up and they're just like, whoa, holy moly. And I say, yeah, look, they logged in yesterday. They logged in today. These people are looking for a home like yours. And I'll click on the mass uh, email or mass text. And I'll say, I can tell them about your home right now. Do you want me to hit this button? And they're like, whoa. Like, really? I go, that's why we get homes sold before the signs go up. Isn't that amazing? And they're just like, yeah. Do you feel comfortable and confident that I know what I'm doing? They're like, yeah. So then we talk about Commissions, Inc. We talk about Google AdWords, whatever else they want to talk about. We buy data. We talk about buying, um, watching people's buying habits and things like that. Then I go into these syndication sites, because they still care about Zillow and Realtor.com and all that other hoopla. So we go over that. We talk about how we're preferred partners and we spend money on that. And showing time. Most people have showing time in their areas now. And I just show them how we're going to arrange showings, how much safer and secure it is these days. We just go over the little things like that. It's not a big deal. 
I like to spend time on this page too. We're your Southern California real estate experts. And I have a picture of a home of all the cities that we work in. So if I say, look, here's one right here. We just sold in your area and the, or this one or that one, wherever the home is. Cause sometimes we work 20, 30 miles out of our uh, geographic range. So I like this page. Remember, this is also, I don't have a copy of it laying right here, but this is also in print. So this is also our pre-listing presentation. So sometimes they'll have this in their hand also with a handwritten card and all that good stuff. Um, so we, we have to put more stuff than we would normally present. We talk about, this is for the amiable, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we're going to hold your hand. And we, we talk about how we're going to go through this. We're partners and we're friends and all this stuff like that. Um, and we just kind of go through the steps of selling their home. It's real simple, real basic. We have checklists, we have flow charts, we have all kinds of stuff that we can show them also. Um, that's really easy. And then we just go through the listing process because a lot of people haven't sold a home in a long time, you guys. So, so I go through the process. I say, here's what happens first. Here's what happens second. And sometimes they're a little nervous and they don't know, you know, so they go, all right, I'd, li I'd like to hear that. And sometimes they're just like, by that time I really get through that second page, they're like, yeah, dude, where do I list? Where do I sign? How do we do this? But if I make it past that, we're going to go through this. We're going to talk about staging their property. Here's what I wanted to rush through. And this is my secret weapon. I don't remember where I learned this, Mike Ferry or Craig Proctor, or who knows? I, I was a seminar crazy person when I was in my 20s. I went to every seminar you could ever dream of. Um, but I like to talk about this 21 point checklist. I say, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, let's be really honest. When's the last time you sold a home? Oh, not in years, great. So how would you like it if I took you down the path of the questions that you should be asking me? And they're like, yeah, that would be kind of helpful because I don't really know what I'm looking for. So remember, when you're competing with another agent, these are my questions. I get to give them the answer, right? So are you a broker or an agent? Now, if you're just an agent, and not a broker, you're not going to like me right now because I'm going to smoke you out of the freaking water just based on that. Do you handle real estate as well as property management? Mr. and Mrs. Smith, why would you deal with somebody who doesn't deal with property management too? Do you know I manage over 600 properties and have over 35,000 active tenants? Probably people that want to buy soon, right? So I use things that are unique to me. And you know, just going through one and two that I'm going to smoke you, right? So pick what you're good at, what you know about, and, and go through that list with them. By the time you get through that list, if you even get there, they're like, oh, thank you very much for taking me through all these questions. I really feel more comfortable now. And then we go through this page. And then I talk about the easy exit listing agreement. It's like the best thing ever. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you sign this listing agreement today. At any time you feel uncomfortable or think you can find somebody to do a better job, all you have to do is tear my listing contract up. It says right here in the agreement, you have 24 hours uh, written notice before we open escrow and you can get out of this agreement. And they love that. There's no pressure. I've already walked them through all the questions. I've bonded with them. We've talked about experiences and, and all sorts of other good stuff. And it's, it's just kind of fun, right? And remember when real estate agents are competing, they're all basically the same. They all say the same things. They all do the same things. So I just try to be a little bit more different. And also, since I study personality styles, you guys should really pay attention to that. As a matter of fact, um, uh, Rick Jiha, our awesome Rick Jiha, talks a lot about personality styles. I love Tony Alessandra. He was my mentor when I was growing up, when I was learning NLP and, and, and personality styles. That dude is amazing. Read the Platinum Rule. If you don't read anything else from him, read the Platinum Rule. I like suggestive selling. And there's a bunch of different um, business negotiating books that he writes and stuff like that. But the more you practice one hour a day of skill set, by the way, write this down. Here's your perfect daily schedule to sell over 100 homes a year. One hour a day of self-help. One hour a day of skill set. Two hours a day of previewing property, however you need to do that in this market. Two hours a day of uh, prospecting, one hour a day of follow-up. That's all you need. Before you go to bed, talk to 50 people, sell 100 homes. Before you go to bed, talk to 25, you're going to sell 50 homes a year. And that's time tested and proven. So you guys, you could see this isn't a really hard thing. This is kind of a no-brainer, right? If you could do three or four listing appointments a day and still show property and still do other things, why wouldn't you do it? I keep hearing this word called the new normal. It's not the new normal. And I can't wait for this new normal to be not normal anymore so we can go back to normal. But the reality is certain things will never go away. Zoom was already coming up, right? And I was teaching agents to do it all the time. And they were really taking hold of this and really liking it. So now, you know, nine out of 10 of my listings are done just like you saw there. 
not as fast. You know, I talk a little bit more about it. We get, like I said, the bonding part is really important, knowing their personality style. And we just talk and we just go through it. And, and it's kind of fun too, because we could even design their ads. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, tell me, I have paper right here. Tell me the things you really want me to advertise about your home. Oh, by the way, when I put your sign up, did you hear that? When I put your sign up or who? Who is going to be my main contact? Is it you, Mr. Smith, or you, Mrs. Smith? Those are the types of things. And we just start jotting that down. And by the time they go through all this, they're like, that was so fun. That was awesome. That was easy. The person didn't have to come to my house. I didn't have to clean it yet. You know, my kid's screaming in the background. It wasn't a big deal. I didn't have to lock the dog up. They're like, this is really cool. So you guys, don't be afraid to try it. Don't be afraid to reach out if you need a little help. And you guys... One more thing, you have an amazing organization here. Uh, this lineup today is fantastic. I would go back and watch these recordings over and over and over. Uh, if you'd like to see my podcast, realestatemarketingshow.com, realestatemarketingshow.com, all this training and much, much more is on there. My Facebook group, Agent Mechanics Coaching with Mike Bjorkman. I don't charge for coaching, you guys. It's all free. It's all there. Um, jump in. There's so many good coaches on this group. And uh, one thing I recommend is grab a little bit of information from everybody. See what style fits you. Like I said, I was a seminar crazy person growing up. And, and I'd go to another seminar every single week. I'd grab a little bit from Mike Ferry, a little bit from Walter Sanford, a little bit from Craig Proctor, a little bit from Joe Stump. And I just put my real estate career together. But in all my things that I've learned and things that I appreciate in this, Zoom. Trust me, you guys, Zoom is the way to go. So, all right, again, thank you very much for watching this. Rick, I'm sending this back to you, brother. I miss you, I'll see you soon. You guys have a great day and enjoy. All right, well, a couple of things, come on. I hope you took notes. He has some really good information. What I liked about it is he kind of wet your appetite with a couple of different ideas or more than a couple actually, so that you could go on and research further and create what you want. Now, Mike's easily found by just you know looking up his name. He's got a YouTube channel, all kinds of great things. And what I would tell you about him is continue to follow his YouTube channels. He's always got great educational things and reach out to him and let him know how much we appreciated that he gave from us today. And again, Mike, from the bottom of my heart and from all of us who put this expo together, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, so it's now my turn to get to introduce Mr. Mike Cuevas. Now, let me tell you something. When I read his bio, what I loved most, he said, I'm just a dude from Chicago who didn't like to prospect, so I learned and effective different ways to create a brand where people would be attracted to me in terms of my real estate sales. Now, he didn't say it word for word like that, but just a dude from Chicago is right out of his mouth. The other thing that he said that was really cool was that he shoots from the hip. Uh, this is all in his bio. Now, I'm sure he's going to demonstrate what he said in his bio when he comes to speak today. And this man will teach us some things that I've been really anxious to learn. How to improve my brand, how to use video more often, and some other really good tricks of the trade, so to speak, for those who are specialists in that area. So, again, get out your pad, get out your pen, and let's welcome Mr. Mike Cuevas. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Back to School Real Estate Expo 2020. I'm really excited to be here, and I appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to sit here and listen to what I'm going to say. So my goals um, today are really simple. I want to add a lot of value and show you guys um, exactly how to use video, at least to your database, and then how to purpose it or multipurpose it for a long-term um, branding strategy in the future. So let's go ahead and uh, get started um, if we can. Now, what if you're going to get started with video, we want to get started at um, is understanding how it sort of works to, to begin with. And um, agents with a strong personal brand don't chase business, business chases them. So in other words, uh, when you're going to start doing video, you're going to be doing it. Uh, the main goal or the main thing you're going to get out of it is the personal branding thing. Um, it's going to build your personal brand if you do it consistently over time. And here's why that matters, because it's your personal brand, people remember. Um, only 4% of consumers pick the agent because uh, of the brand they were affiliated with, which means 96% of consumers chose the agent, not the broker they're associated with. It's very simple. This is a belly to belly business. People do business with agents they know, like, trust, but you have to be remembered. See, people don't remember that you're in real estate or that you do loans. They remember how you're in real estate and how you do loans. 
when you do it visually and you do it with video, it's more impactful and top of mind brand awareness is a lot um, easier to be had. So let's go ahead and walk through an actual exercise on uh, exactly sort of how this works. So you can sort of get your head around it. Now, if, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes right now. Look at the image that you see in front of you. And it says, boy, and close your eyes and tell me what you think. Maybe you're thinking of a little boy running down the street. Maybe you're thinking of your kid, maybe your son, your brother, right? You got a couple of vague images of, of a boy, naturally. Now look at the picture and tell me um, what you think. It's a little bit more in context. Oh, little Asian boy's got three teeth. He's got bubbles on his head. You see that picture, that image is a lot more powerful than this three letter word, boy. But if I were to take that a step further and play a video of a boy, look how much more in context that really is. You see, when we're talking about using video, video at the end of the day is the most impactful way to communicate. And that's why it builds your brand. So let me give you another example that I'm sure you can relate to. Um, I'm in, um, uh, I graduated college in 2002. Wow. So 18 years ago. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, like most of us at what school, we have uh, friends that we sort of stayed in touch with over the years through Facebook, right? And here's a friend of mine, his name's Matt Yonke. And Matt is a uh, guy that, um, you know, I've known for um, a long time in college. And we were in college, we were sort of like ride and die partners. Like we would do everything together. We'd go to the bars together, we'd go work out together. And then after college, our, our relationship sort of fades. Um, and what happens during that um, is that we don't see each other as much. Well, the way I've stayed in touch with Matt over the last five years is because of Facebook. Now, because Matt has these images and uh, of his kids, I'm constantly still seeing him around on Facebook. And the truth is, is that if Matt um, were to walk past me on the sidewalk today, I would equally walk up to him and say, what's up, bro? I haven't seen you in so long. I miss you so much. How you been, blah, blah. And it'd be like old times, right? But if Facebook wasn't there and I wasn't visually staying in front of or on top of mind with Matt, what are the chances of, my, of we actually not even knowing who the hell he is? You see, power of visual imagery is everything and staying in touch is everything. And that's how impactful it is to your business. So who can you relate to that you've stayed in touch with over time? And at the end of the day, all we're doing is that we stayed in touch mentally. See, video is the most impactful way to stay on top of mind. We use it in marketing to nurture and build relationships with our sphere of influence and our local community. And that's when you consistently communicate with any audience over time, that's exactly how you build a brand. And yes, you have a personal brand as an individual real estate agent, a lender, whatever side of the real estate business you are or whatever business you're in, you absolutely have a personal brand. And it might feel a little weird thinking of yourself as a brand because you're like, I'm just a person. But if you were to start your own business, would that be a brand? Well, that's what the real estate business is. So all your brand is, is the number of people who instantly associate your name, in this case, with real estate. That will determine how big your brand is. Now, people don't remember what you do for a living. They remember how you do it. And if you want a lot of people to remember how you do it, you have to consistently communicate to the same audience over time, a.k.a. a famous term we've had in the real estate industry, uh, farming, right? But I don't want to talk theory with you guys. I hate people that talk theory. It drives me nuts. Let's talk numbers because everything I'm going to share with you is not um, theory, it's mathematical. At the end of the day, this is where business generates for, um, for realtors. Like where do consumers and what are the choices? How do people decide to hire their agent? This has been, since I've been in the business, uh, the stats have not changed uh, much, but overwhelmingly you can see really quick right here is that the vast majority of sellers were referred to an agent or used them in the past, or they personally met them through an open house or a sign um, or had a personal relationship. When you look at buyers, the numbers are just about the same. See, in whether you're working with sellers, whether you're working with buyers, over 74% of business comes from people you already know, you used in the past, or you personally met. 
you know, back to the example I just used about Matt and if Matt stayed in touch with me. So what the hell do you think happens when you stop communicating with your most important asset? What the hell do you think happens when you stop telling everybody in the world that you're in real estate on a consistent basis? Well, they forget you exist, but it's not their job to send you business. It's your job to remind them. Folks, video is not lead generation. It's branded. And when you if you approach video as a lead generation thing, you're setting yourself up for disaster. We're not fighting for leads. We're fighting for the attention of our database and the local community because top of mind, brand awareness equals conversations, which equals referrals. And 72% of people will close with the first agent they meet with. This is in theory, it's mathematical because now we just got to compare that to the actual moving trends. Well, each and every year, 10 to 15% of the population moves. That means 10 to 15% of your database, 10 to 15% of your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers, anyone and everyone you walk past in the damn street are moving this year. And 100% of the population knows someone moving that they can refer you to. So if people in your market move every six to nine years, how many people in your database are statistically moving this year? See, you don't need thousands and thousands of people. Branding and attracting doesn't need a large audience. You need a targeted one. You need an engaged one. You need one that knows who the hell you are and actually likes you personally. So your database actually wants to refer you business on top of it. And this is why or how people, um, this is how referrals work. Because again, this is none of this is theory. See, when people refer you business, it's because they like you or they're satisfied with the past service. Um, they also like or the person hinting or asking about getting the referral. And then ultimately, they like to be able to solve a problem. You know, we are wired to seek the approval of others and people are always looking to be acknowledged. Think about any time you refer to anyone anything. You're always like, hey, did you go there? Did you go there? Well, it's because you just wanted to say, hey, thanks for that referral. We're naturally wired to go out there and help others. And that's just the way God made us. But in order to get a referral, three things have to occur. The referring party has to notice a conversation about real estate. They have to think of you. And then three, they have to like you enough or trust you enough to introduce your services into the conversation. It's as simple as that. So that's where video comes in because video builds audiences, not databases. See, a database is nothing more than a collection of the contact information you have sitting on the CSV sheet. It's not worth anything if there's people on it don't even know who the hell you are. See, an audience is a collection of those relationships that actually pay attention to what you say when you send an email. Video, what that does is it really just nurtures your database and transforms it into an audience as you apply video to your database consistently. Folks, this is a giant popularity contest. And if you just follow what I'm sharing with you right here, um, you'll realize that this isn't rocket science at all. This is um, common sense. The, it's a popularity contest and the more and more you use video to remind everyone what you do, the more memorable you become. That's it. So now that you understand how it works, let's go into the meat and potatoes. Like, where do I start? Because most people are always like, what do I do first? What do I do first? Oh my God, what do I say? I have a face made for radio, blah, 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 blah. You'll give yourself every excuse in the books to uh, procrastinate on getting started. So let's go through that. And I hope to walk you through exactly, this is how we um, walk everyone through in our process um, when we're onboarding them to do their video work for them. But you could do this yourself too if you if you don't um, if you want to do it DIY it at home. So I'm just gonna walk you through a process. Um, first off, uh, you got to define what your strategy is up front or your theme. You got to define your brand, your voice. Your videos don't have to be about real estate. They need to remind people you're in real estate. Some of your videos can be about real estate, of course, but they don't have to be. You don't have to force yourself to bore people to death. At the end of the day, it's more important to talk about something you're passionate about because the key is authenticity and the goal is to connect. That's it. See, so when you have a strategy that you're excited about, you're naturally authentic on camera and then you connect more naturally versus forcing yourself to talk about a bunch of stuff that you know you don't even like in the first place. So it's very important to realize that um, your strategy is everything, and it's going to differ from individual to individual because um, we all have a personality. Some people are going to like talking about real estate content and will be really good at it. Some people will just do listing videos. Some people will do business owner interviews. I don't know what your video strategy is. I know you have one, uh, but what I don't know is um, ultimately... Um, um, what I don't know is ultimately um, who 
or what that is, but I do know that you have one. Julio, you left batted? Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I got someone at my uh, door in my office. Um, all right, so let's keep on going and let's, fo let's focus on how communication is perceived so that you can sort of visualize um, how we all communicate. And this is super duper important because a lot of times people worry so much about what we're saying versus how we're saying it. People are worried more about um, what's coming out of our mouth. And the truth is that people are only retaining 10% of what comes out of your mouth. Um, so don't worry about what you're saying, worry more about how you're saying it. Uh, that's what's super duper 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 important. 90% of communication is gonna be based upon your tone and your body language. It's gonna be based upon the tonality and how you're saying it, not what you're saying it. People are only gonna retain 10% of what comes out of your mouth. So it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So let's walk through a couple different examples right here uh, of how two people um, here came up with a strategy to go out that really matched their personality and their brand. Uh, the first one is uh, Wake Up Seattle, which is a mortgage broker in Seattle. And dude's always got coffee. He's always on the go. He's like super high energy. And Wake Up Seattle was just a very appropriate for his personality. Now, what Wake Up Seattle is all about is it's a community series. It's all about different aspects of Seattle living. Um, neighborhood tours, restaurant interviews, um, cost of living, community information, school shopping. I mean, you name it. But what he's going to do as a mortgage broker is more interview um, and uh, interview a bunch of realtors um, within the markets, um, as well as market his own brand. But regardless of what he's going to, how he does it or what he does, every single time he's on video, he'll be reminding his entire network what he does for a living, give loans and do refinances, um, as well as use the exact same strategy to attract more and more realtors. Um, for a lot of uh, recruiters, it's the exact same strategy. See, people come to you when you become somebody and media does that for people. People are gravitated to people that are willing to put themselves out there, in other words. Um, the agent down below is a mom in San Diego that is a um, mom that is a realtor, not a realtor that happens to be a mom. So if she's going to go out and do business owner interviews, she's creating interviews on kid-friendly businesses. Or if she was going to go out and do neighborhood tours, she's really focusing on the schools and the parks as opposed to the bars and the restaurants, for example. So at the end of the day, your uh, video strategy, you guys, is nothing more than a spitting image of what you do on the weekends. Um, strategy is very, very simple. If you wanted to create a strategy, uh, and this is just one um, type of strategy. I love creating a community-based show and I like to get set up a consistent schedule. You know, do one to two videos a month that remind everyone you're in database. You take those videos, you post them on all your social media channels, you video email them to your database and you post them on your website. You also put all that stuff on your YouTube channel for additional lead gen and brand building, more of that down the road. And if you want more eyeballs, you run ads. It is really, really, really simple, folks. I want to walk you through sort of what this big picture is and show you the difference between advertising and marketing, your real estate business, really. And unfortunately, um, a lot of the conversation around um, real estate agents, especially on social media, tends to be on advertising or lead generation activities. Well, folks, this is where less than maybe 10, maybe 12% of business actually comes from. The lion's share of business is going to come from your marketing activities because of how people choose and hire the realtor and or lender, which is primarily referral based or repeat business as you saw from earlier. So the difference between these two things is night and day. See, there's two ways an agent or lender attracts business. You chase it or you attract it. You chase it or you attract it. How you communicate with these two audiences is night and day though. See, when I'm marketing my database, I'm doing it through several channels. I'm hitting them with direct mail, video email, and I'm hitting them on social media. And sometimes I'm running ads on social to stay in front of them. But I'm taking a multi-channel approach to being everywhere all of the time with video via email and social media. And I'm also adding direct mail on that. Now, the marketing here isn't sales messages. It's a bunch of jabs that say, don't forget I exist. Oh, hey, by the way, did you see this? You see, this type of stuff over here is more advertising, like you're chasing and prospecting people, starting conversations saying, hey, are you looking to buy or sell? Or do you know anyone looking to buy or sell? That's advertising. And there is a major difference. And each of them have a place here. But what we're really talking about is building a brand with video, which you cannot build a brand amongst a bunch of strangers. You got to do it amongst the people you already that people that know of you or 
Um, if they are strangers, you drip on them until they become part of your audience. So don't overthink this thing, guys. That's what this is in the big picture. So let's go through a couple uh, meat and potatoes. And what I'm gonna do here is, because you may, probably won't see the sound, uh, I'm just gonna show you a couple of videos here in the background while I talk through them. Um, this particular video was uh, an intro video for the Wake Up Seattle show. And as you can see on the Wake Up Seattle show, um, there's the lender right there. He's super high energy, he's awesome dude. And um, his personality just comes out um, on them. But he doesn't really have to sit there and be like, hey, buy and sell mortgages or interest rates are all time low because let's be honest, that's pretty damn boring. What he does is he just wants to remind everyone with what he does for a living. And he's always gonna have a cup of coffee in his hand because that's part of the brand message and part of the strategy on the show. Top of mind brand awareness consistently to the same audience over time attracts the business. Now, what this lender will do in this situation is to put these videos in front of two separate audiences. One audience is gonna be the real estate agents he's trying to attract relationships with and nurture. And the other is gonna be his own SOI because it's about time he started building his own damn business because the same statistics are true of a lender. 10 to 15% of his network will be moving this year. 100% of them have a referral for him. So don't overthink um, the video side of things, um, which is more important is just that you get down and dirty and you just do it, folks. That's at the end of the day. Um, you will get better on video as you go. But the strategy, whether you're talking about real estate or not, is more of working on your personal brand, getting face to face with people because it's the most impactful way to communicate. So the next question I always get is how many videos do we need to do per month? Um, so I want to walk you through how to look at a media calendar and how to approach it because um, this is all about staying consistent. If you can stay consistent to your database, you're always going to attract business from them. And it's almost a recession proof business model because people buy and sell regardless of um, the market you're in. So let's take this example. If you're an agent that's doing two videos a month, um, most people for marketing or database, I tell them two videos a month is all you need, all right? So if you're doing a data, if you're doing an agent for two videos a month, um, here's what I would recommend, um, or here's how it works. So I would space out the videos equally two weeks apart. And once you publish those videos, walk through what you're gonna do with it. First off, the video is gonna go to your YouTube channel, optimize for rank, you're gonna multi-purpose the video there. As you're creating your content, you wanna keep building out your YouTube channel as you go. You take the video, write a blog post, put it up on your website as well, and build the same type of content and our playlist also on your website so you could further build that online property as well. But we're gonna video email to your database, send it to your entire email list, and then you're gonna post it on all your social profiles. Um, your Facebook, your Facebook business, you're going to post it on your Instagram, your LinkedIn, wherever your database hangs out at. And then if you want to be a little bit more advantageous or a little bit more, um, you want more eyeballs, run ads, run boosts, run ads to your database, custom audience, and watch what's, what's going to happen is that that push, that video is going to hit them right here. You're going to go run ads and you're going to be there for about a week. And then you take a break and then boom, you're back with another episode. So when you're talking about remaining consistent for database marketing, I like just two a month. I think that's completely appropriate because there's other things you're doing on social media and amongst your monthly uh, marketing activities that are also reminding people you're in real estate. These are just other ways. This is just a more impactful way to do it consistently over time. But each and every month, you're going to might have new listings and you have these postings and you have holidays and neighborhoods and you're doing pictures on Facebook, whatever it may be, there's not a shortage of content to remind everyone in the market your business is a shortage of you sitting back and actually planning a media calendar right now and doing it. So what other types of videos um, can agents create? Because there's not a shortage of content, so let's go through it. This is a uh, mortgage broker. Again, he's doing a case study um, on a video of a uh, how he was focusing and demonstrating how his guaranteed loan program um, got his buyer's offer accepted over a cash buyer. So he's demonstrating social proof. Nobody likes just listed, just sold. So start showcasing and demonstrating um, people's experiences of working with you, just like HGTV does. Instead of saying just listed, just sold, say this 50 year old just bought their first house. Um, here's how, right? That's a lot more interesting to consume than, say, than bragging about how much money you made this weekend. Um, 
this is a community point of interest video. Um, this is a team of agents. This is a team of agents in uh, Denver and they are all young parents and they like to have a lot of fun and they tie family life and kids into their videos and their content. And the name of their series is called Play Out Denver. What Play Out Denver does is there, it's a community series. It's a community show. They walk around town and they remind people they're in database and they explore Denver. Tell us about different aspects to live in, but they focus on things that are really fun to do because they're a fun team. So they want to build their brand as knowing the fun and, you know, the cool, like, you know, play out. So that's part of their whole brand. So very, very, very cool in what they're doing out there. And they're turning a lot of um, heads. Now, I could also do some types of neighborhood tours. Um, anything we do in the community is going to be um, remind everybody that, you know, we're in real estate. So it's not so much about um, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, but more of a series of jabs that'll tell us sort of how um, we are in real estate, if that makes sense. Don't forget I exist, don't forget I exist. Just from those few examples, how many more ideas do you think you can go with? Um, community informational videos. These are great for YouTube. If you're trying to do video and you want to combine a lead generation strategy with it, running a YouTube series that gets searched for makes a lot of sense, um, especially in states that have high relocation numbers. You know, this is moving to, living in. These are informational videos that talk about the cost of living, the pros and cons, um, the top three neighborhoods in, for example. And the goal here would be to create a lot of different content to remind everybody and become the local expert in that market. So um, again, pretty, pretty uh, simple video to go out and shoot, but there's a strategy behind it, right? Um, content videos, we haven't even talked about creating real estate content. How much real estate content can you create? Closing costs, how to buy and sell at the same time, how to sell your house without a real estate agent, how to, you know, there's no shortage of content out there, you guys, but um, how you use that content is um, very, very important. So um, what you're seeing here is that, what I'm getting at is that don't overthink content creation. There's a ton of it out there to create. You just have to be willing to want to go out there and do it. So now you got to be a couple different types of videos. Let's go more in depth on how we distribute them because uh, truthfully, you can have the best video in the world. But if you aren't getting it out there, what the hell's the point, right? If no one sees it, more importantly, if the right people don't see it. Very first thing I recommend doing is uh, video emailing it to your database uh, with a video email software. Video email is awesome. It's the easiest way to stay in touch and nurture your database with uh, with um, any type of marketing. And, you know, this is a mortgage broker. Again, he's just saying he did a, a neighborhood tour. It's nothing to do with his mortgage business, but it humanizes his brand and the branding all around it will remind people he's in mortgage in a human type of way. So don't overthink this stuff, you guys. It's it's a uh, video email. Bomb Bomb's a great system. We have a system called Sweet Assist um, that goes with our whole software. So many of our clients use that. I don't care what type of video email you do, just start doing it and start doing video on it. And more importantly, videos that don't have anything to do with your business. Um, I see work a lot better. So let's talk about social uh, platforms. Every video you have, you wanna distribute them on your social platforms, obviously. This means put it on your Instagram and upload it organically. Use the hashtags on Instagram. Put it on your Facebook feed, your personal page, and then also put it on Pinterest and your business page separately, independently. The biggest mistake I see is when people share from their business or from their personal, their business or vice versa, upload organically to each and treat them as separate properties, treat them as separate platforms. Your business page is to run ads. Personal page is where your database hangs out at. I recommend running ads to your database because uh, you, you'll reach just a whole lot more of them. Pinterest came out with a video side um, platform that's really, really cool that um, we're testing. But there's no shortage of places to post your content. Just remember who you're connected with on social are just the people you already know, like, and trust and love you. Uh, secondly, your website. Um, would you hire you if you visited your website? You know, and be honest with yourself on that question. Every video should always get multi-purpose back to your website. Give people a way to get to know you. Give people a way to humanize your brand. Again, don't overthink it, but make sure you put the content back on your website. 
Multi-purposing and optimizing the videos on YouTube is extremely important, especially if you're doing a living in or moving to type series because you're playing the buyer um, lead generation game. And this is a very important, very effective um, strategy. But if you're not putting your videos on YouTube, how the hell are you ever going to get found, right? So I'll give you a little bit more on YouTube, um, show you a little bit of how it's uh, looking now. And this number is actually right here, our pre-COVID. If you look these numbers up right now, it's like 150,000, 145,000 um, for search. And we're seeing this across the country. So people, um, as they're moving, they're relocating, they're making these plans with COVID. Internet search is way up. It's crazy um, on what's happening. But um, you want to create videos around searches that people or keywords around people search for. So YouTube's a search engine. So the idea here is very simple. What you want to do is you're going to basically um, have a strategy. And when you get in the habit of content creation, my advice is to build out playlists or series of content at a time or categories of, of content at a time. So if you're going to build in a living in playlist, living in Chicago, living in San Diego, whatever it may be, great. Build out like five, seven, eight, ten 10 videos on that topic before you go to the new keyword, right? That's a, a really strategic way of... Uh, planning your content creation. Here's another way to look at YouTube. Look at YouTube as like a book, but there's no words, it's all videos. And if you're on your YouTube uh, channel, you're gonna see your top right here is gonna be your header, right? The first video you see right here is like your introduction or your table of contents or your preface if you were to open up a book. And then these things here are called playlists. These playlists are like the chapters of your book and the videos underneath the playlist are like the pages that make up the chapter, if you will. So. Um, as you build out content, do it strategically. Um, this is a whole nother webinar, but just to give you a little bit more um, insight on sort of what else there is there. And if you want more eyeballs, run ads. Um, I'm mainly using Facebook nowadays just to run ads to my uh, website visitors and email lists, um, to be honest with you, and engagement and people who watch videos. I'm not using Facebook really anymore at all for lead generation at all. I'm using it for more of a branding type play. Uh, we'll see how that shapes up. But um, what I do know is that it's an easy way to stay in front of your database. Um, and, you know, that's why we have a business page. So if you're going to run ads, run them to your database. It's the most important audience that you have. Um, that is about it for my presentation. I appreciate you guys at the Back to School Expo. Um, if you guys want more information on our stuff, uh, we teach, we script, we coach, we edit, we distribute videos for people within the real estate industry, um, including basically show you what to do, coach you how to do it, and then do all the work for you. Um, you have to shoot your videos, but um, we can make it easy on you. But uh, if you like the content, you like the presentation you heard today, please go ahead and subscribe to us uh, on my YouTube channel, Real Estate Marketing Dude. Uh, Instagram and Facebook, follow me on those too. And you'll see some of the content we're at. And if you like the content, visit our website. There's a whole library. You can learn more about our services if you like. Um, and I really do appreciate you guys having me. So thank you very much for the Back to School Expo. If you guys have any questions, you know how to reach me. My name is Mike Cuevas, the real estate marketing dude. Appreciate your time and uh, good luck and start creating some damn content. Peace. All right. So I loved how he was, as he said, shooting from the hip, and more importantly, just laid back and matter of fact about information that has worked so well for him. Uh, what I would have liked to see, but I don't know how to make that do that, is to get to see more of his face because I loved his expressions and I loved his, his style of delivering something that now we can all use to create better results. So Mike Cuevas, I gotta tell you, that was amazing and thank you so much and I hope that at the end of all this, we're all going to be able to have a recording of this so I can watch it again and again and get better at what you're already doing amazingly well. Thanks a lot, Mike Cuevas, and we hope to see you again. All right, well, I hope that up till now you've enjoyed all of the incredible speakers and trainers, people who have taught from the goodness of their heart in all subject matters. <laughs> and all I ask you is that you look back over them and decide which ones you're going to use to create the, the business that you're looking to have in real estate. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you want to someday use everything you've learned today, it should take you a while to do that. I remember hearing one of my mentors say when I was much younger that when you learn a bunch of new ideas, especially in a seminar or a day like today where you have such great speakers in all areas of real estate, 
you want to pick out two or three ideas and learn to incorporate them one at a time. And also never move on to the next thing until you've really mastered the first thing you're trying. Now, you'll remember in one of Michael, in Michael Hellickson's talk, he even revert, related to the fact that, you know, writing it down is one thing, but writing it down and learning it and then teaching it to someone else helps you to master it more. Anthony Robbins himself says the final step to self-mastery is teaching. Now, the reason I say that is the educational part of today is over, and we have one more amazing speaker who's more from the informational side rather than the educational side. However, he is a very well-noted speaker and trainer in real estate all over the world, not just here in the United States and Canada. And he has done so. He's created an amazing career over just 23 years. He's written a book called Momentum, and he has built an incredible organization, and he runs a team that does well over 150 million in real estate sales every single year. The man's amazing. He has an incredible marriage, seven children, and so much going on in his life all the time. So we were very, very honored and excited when he agreed to do a talk for us, an informational talk. Now, I usually like this gentleman, his name's Brent Gove, to close out for us. And I'm going to let you know that I will do a quick closeout after he's done, but I gotta tell you, He's the kind of speaker you want to close out an event. Just a lot of power and energy, and he's very solid in what he presents. Now, that's not to take away from any of the former speakers we've had today, because every one of them on their own is incredible. And the people that we've had today on their own could make up the best who's who's list in real estate. So I feel really excited about what the committee did to bring the best talent to today. So I don't want to take away from Brent anymore and some of his story he'll tell while he's talking. But I got to tell you, you're really in for a treat to hear a little bit about this information side that Brent Gove will bring us. All right, everybody, put your hands together and welcome Mr. Brent Gove. Hey, everybody, Brent Gove here. I hope you've just loved this Back to School Real Estate Expo. Great speakers, great information, and I'm thrilled to be your last speaker. So it's almost over. We're going to go fast. It's going to be good. A little bit about me before I launch. I've been in real estate for 24 years sold over 4,000 properties with my team, buyers, agents, listing specialists, uh, staff. Takes a lot of people to do something like that. Written a few books, uh, was the top REMAX agent in California for a while, moved to Keller Williams, have had a great career. But today I've been asked to kind of do, everybody's been hearing all about eXp Realty. The stock just went bananas. The company's hit a billion and now they're coming up on 2 billion. So everybody wants to know what's eXp all about. So I've been asked to do kind of an expose on eXp. Talk about why all the agents are going crazy. I mean, they've shattered all records of the predecessors by a decade. This company's on fire. So what I'm going to do is break it down and show you how it works. So the first thing I need to tell you is that this company was founded by Glenn Samford. Uh, now he's considered to be a genius. You know, one of the newest billionaires in America, or if he's not a billionaire, he's really, really close. But 10 years ago, they're like, oh, you're just a geek. This is a terrible idea. It reminds me of what I saw on Netflix. I'm like, why would I watch a movie on a little bitty screen when I can watch it on my 70 inch flat screen? I remember when Uber came out, I'm not getting in some stranger's car, like it's better to get in a yellow cab with that stranger. But uh, it's always funny, my reaction to technology, then it's like, oh, Uber's great. Netflix is great. Even Airbnb, I'm like, I'm not staying in somebody's house. Where do they change the sheets? You know, how old are those pillows in the mattress? And of course, you finally start Airbnb. And you're like, man, that's really nice. And, and so technology is changing America as we know it. Amazon has proven it. Uh, Zillow, Netflix, um, you, you name it. Travelocity is just, just taking on the travel industry. And of course, eXp is coming to real estate, it's for the agents, it's for you, it's for broker associates, it's not for the franchise owners. Trust me, they're not excited about this at all. But we are, and that's why the company's growing so fast. From 1,300 agents just a few years ago to 32,000 headed to 100,000 in the next like two or three years. The company's on fire. So here's the bottom line, but by the way, even Tony Robbins realized he looked at uh, Hilton Corporation. It's been around for 100 years, valued at $18 billion. Airbnb comes along for just in the past 10 years, now valued at $31 billion. 
100 years to 18 billion American success story. And of course, I'm talking to agents here in Canada, the US, worldwide. And so bottom line is the cloud-based version of, of companies is just killing it. How's your local mall doing? Terrible. How's your office going? Empty. What's happening with online orders? Zoom, technology exploding. You need to get in that space. You need to embrace that space. No, I love my thermal fax machine. No, you don't. DocuSign seems uh, confusing till I signed a 22 page offer on a ski lift in about three minutes or two minutes or maybe 90 seconds. I'm like, oh, this is great because he used to ski down and beg the people in the ski patrol office to let me use their thermal fax. I'd stay there for an hour, sign everything and fax it back. Life is changing. So open your mind to the possibilities. So we have this cloud based environment. There's no desk fees. There's You can work from anywhere. It cuts the overhead of brick and mortar. And the bottom line is we have a Regis Corporate Suite membership where we have over 3,000 offices throughout the US, Canada, and worldwide. 3,000 places for you to work. You get a membership. It's pretty cool. Next, is we use lead generation. And basically what CRM and lead generation, we put it together, it's called KV Core. Google KV Core. K is in Kevin, V is in Victory, Core like the Marine Corps, KV Core. And our agents at EXP are getting 60 to 100 leads a month. The ad spend for that's about 250 a month. Literally Google KV Core. It's not owned by EXP. We partnered with them. And we give everybody at EXP one of these websites. On the open market, they pretty much run about 600 a month. And you sign a one-year contract. At EXP, we just give it to you. And so you don't have to spend the 600 a month. That's not required at EXP. EXP cut a deal with them and they take advantage of the economies of scale discount. But how would we like to add 60 to 100 app bats a month for you? Be powerful. Next thing was we have in-person training. I mean, I do here in Sacramento, we've had five, 600 people in grand ballrooms. Nobody's doing this. We are growing like crazy. And so we do in-person and we do cloud training. We used to have 20 live hours a week in the cloud. Everyone thought we were nuts. Of course, COVID-19 hit the pandemic. And bottom line is now we're looked at like geniuses. Zoom, Zoom's weird, really, because their stock exploded. Zoom's exploding. The world has changed and we want you to join us. So now we have over 50 hours a week of training. Mega superstars from Remax, Berkshire Hathaway, Sotheby's, Keller Williams, Coldwell Banker, Matt, serious trainers are in the EXP cloud training and they're at EXP now. I mean, the shift is on. Major superstars from every brokerage has come to EXP. Then we have what we call equity opportunities, chances for you to acquire stock in your own company. Today, I have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of shares in, in our company. And the stock was, remember, it was 290 a share about three and a half years ago when I joined. And now it's trading. Last I checked today, $29 a share. I was promised by the people who own the franchises I used to work, good people. They were sincere, They were, but they were sincerely wrong. They promised me it would not be sustainable if the stock would go to zero within two years. Now it's been three years, eight months, and the stock doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and then, and then doubled, tripled, and quadrupled. It's just been amazing. So open your mind to the possibility. You get stock when you close your first home. You get stock when you refer an agent to our company. You get stock when you cap. At my old company, we give people a ball cap and they got a $15 ball cap. I'd rather have a bunch of stock. In fact, um, there's a you, our cap is $16,000 a year. It's not the lowest cap. It's not the most expensive cap, but the bottom line, it's $16,000 a year. Now, when you cap, you also get a big stock award for that. And then when you cap and do 20 sales, um, you're, it's probably for most agents in the U.S., it depends upon where you live. Um, in, in San Francisco, you can cap in one or two sales. Uh, Beverly Hills, La Jolla, San Diego. San Diego is like four sales. If you're in Oklahoma, like 14 sales. It depends upon the price of the homes that you sell, how quick you cap at our $16,000 cap. That's all our company collects from you. But when you cap and do 20 additional sales, okay, if you're the main team lead, you cap and do 20 additional sales, you win the Icon Stock Award, which is you win back $16,000 worth of cap. $12,000 immediately, $2,000 when you go to our annual convention, which is now virtual. You just show up, sign in, done, super easy. And $2,000 when you go to our shareholder meeting every year in April or May, used to be in Florida. Again, that's virtual. 
sign in, you get 2,000. I used to go to Remax annual conventions, mega camps, family reunions, Craig Proctor events, big, huge conventions. I never got $2,000 worth of stock. Now for our icon agents, when they show up, they actually earn 2,000 worth of stock if they qualify for the icon stock awards. So could you imagine paying your brokerage in X amount, in this case, 16,000, and then getting 16,000 worth of stock? Again, you have to cap and do 20 sales. In most parts of the country, it's gonna be about 28 to 30 sales a year. Again, this is for iconic agents, agents who are doing well. It's just really cool. By the way, I got that award three years ago, and it doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and kept going from there. I think today it's worth over $80,000. Oh, we just did the calculation right there, James. $120,000. I paid in 16, what did you pay your broker three and a half years ago? And what do you get back today? Probably like me for 20 years, a big fat nothing. Thank you, Christmas card. Maybe they take you to the Christmas party and you get chicken and mashed potatoes or maybe they sprung for steak. I'll take the hundred, how much? $120,000 for the Icon Award again. Well, it won't do that again, really? Because two years ago, I won, I won it again and that stock award exploded. And then last year and this year, I have agents who have simply sold real estate at EXP and they have four, five, six hundred thousand worth of stock. I know of one in Austin, Texas, a million dollars of stock, but that was a month ago. Since then, the stock price has doubled. He now has two million dollars worth of stock. All he did was sell real estate at EXP. Stock awards are pretty cool. Then there's finally, as I wrap this up, and really why everyone's so excited is we share revenues with you. Because you're a shareholder, it's kind of like agent-owned company. And the shares of stock is like an agent-owned company. And like some stocks, some stocks pay dividends. Revenue share is like dividends, not dividends, but like dividends. And you're going to begin to receive a percentage of the revenue from EXP if you help grow the company. The more you grow the company, more you get. So if you look at the slide here, we have seven tiers. We completely copy this from Keller Williams. Um, and uh, they've been doing profit sharing for 20, 25 years. We copied the model. It's a good model. Props to Keller Williams. They're a wonderful company, by the way. So is Remax. So is Cobalt Banker. So is Century 21. These are great companies. We're just different. And so if you refer one person on tier one, see that one plus on the right, one person? And they're a capping agent, which means typically in most cities, they're selling anywhere from eight to 10 homes a year, around $350,000 purchase price. They're going to cap. And then what happens is you get 2,800 of the 16,000. Our founder, Glenn Sanford, took that middle column. We see 28, 32, 2, 12, 8, 2, and 4. You add it up, there's a $16,000 cap. And then he sliced it off in bite-sized rewards. The first reward is $2,800. The next reward is $3,200. But you have to refer five people on the right-hand column, five people to our company to qualify for Tier 2. Again, the more you help grow the company, the more the company pays you. It's called compensation for contribution. You tell 10 people about a company, they not only pay you the 2,800 or the 3,200, but then they pay the 2,000 on tier three. The more you tell, the more you get paid. The more you help us grow, the more you will be compensated. It's a beautiful, it's like real estate. The more homes you sell, the more you're compensated. Same thing here. So your company, go grow your company like crazy. Tell lots of people. I, now, Keller has a model called profit sharing. I referred 55 people, love the company. My profit sharing was averaging 700 a month. Some people get 7,000, some get four, but the um, the revenue share model was was just crazy. That's all I got to tell you that. It was like times 40. It was such a bigger number. So how does it work exactly? Well, again, it grows in increments of five to tier six. If you look, you have to refer on that column over there on the, the right-hand uh, side as you're looking at the screen. You have to refer 25 agents, unlocks tier seven. It grows in increments of five, and then it goes to 40. When you, there's a jump of 15 to get to 40, but it unlocks tier seven. That is 4,000 an agent. When I did that, I had 10 capping agents there. And if they cap, you get 4,000. What happens if they don't cap, then you get nothing? No, they do half a cap, you get half the pay, you get two. What if they don't sell? I mean, if a cap's eight to 10, they only sell four or five. But what if they sell one or two, or like a quarter cap? Then you get a thousand. Quarter cap, half cap, full cap. You just take that 4,000, slice it up any way you want. All the numbers in the center column. I had 10 capping agents there when I got there within eight months. And that's 10 times 4,000. So I started earning 40,000 a year in revenue share from just one 
of my seven tiers. I think, well, this sounds like some sort of a uh, network marketing thing where you get paid on different levels. Let me tell you, this happens at every company, it happens at your company. If you are an XYZ company and you like it and people say, how do you like your company? That's great. And they ask you a few questions. You think I could talk to the manager there or the broker? I'd, I'd be interested in working there. Sure. And they join. How are you compensated? We just simply think like, would you give a referral to someone in San Diego or Denver or Orlando that you should get a 25% referral fee? We incentivize you to make referrals. That is a normal practice. Same thing EXP, but here's the deal. A 25% referral fee on a listing or a buyer lead is a one-time event typically. Here, as long as that agent is at EXP, you get paid month after month, year after year. It's written into our charter. When does it end? It doesn't. So let me give you a small example. Let's say it's a five-year example here on the screen. Let's say that the first year you refer 10 people um, who cap. That means they sell at least eight to 10 homes a year. I kind of set a goal. I would talk to people about these people who sell at least 10 homes a year or more. These are full-time agents, not part-timers. And guess what? I did that in like two months. And if you tell 10, you're going to get 2,800 a person for each capping agent times 10, that's $28,000. Now I did 40 within eight months. So you could actually multiply that times four. Every agent I told was pretty much a capping agent. So you can multiply that number times four, it's over 100,000 a year. Pretty cool. Now here's the deal, but sticking with just 10, let's say over the next five years, you help those 10 do what you did, they each tell 10. Think, but is that realistic? Well, what if it took seven years or nine? By the way, it took me six months. I told 10 in a couple months, and then they all told 10 within six months. It's not that difficult. When agents are rewarded with ownership in their company through shares of stock, and then they get revenues from the company because we don't have the overhead because we're cloud-based, this model cannot be copied. It is so awesome. So here's the bottom line. If those 10 tell 10, now let's say it took five years, you would have 100 agents. And if you're, if you're talking to capping agents, that's 100 times 3,200. If you go back to the screen before, you'll notice that tier two is 3,200 an agent. So if you have 100 of those, 100 times 3,200 is 320,000, plus the 28,000 a year for the 10 you originally told, that's 348,000 a year. What you do, you refer 10 productive agents to our company, then they in turn taught there, they went and found 10 within, and we took five years. I did it six months. Now, here's the cool thing. I didn't just do 10. I did 40 in eight months. So what happens is I did four times the amount. So you could do the math in your head. What's four times 348? It's a lot of income. And that's why within about a year and a half, maybe um, 19 months, I stopped listing homes. I didn't need to sell homes. And my revenue share was way more than I was making selling 60 homes a year at an average person price of about 450,000 house. It's 60 where I got 100% of my check minus the $27,000 cap at my old brokerage. I was making way more than that, the revenue share. I thought, I'm not going to list another house. It's been amazing. So who do you talk to? Anyone throughout the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Australia. Yesterday, we announced we opened, we're opening in South Africa, Mexico, France, Portugal, and Brazil, all by the fourth quarter of this year. Very exciting what's happening with international growth. So you can talk to people literally all over the world. I have hundreds of agents in Canada today. I think I have 30, 40 agents in the UK, 20 or 30 in Australia. I already have, um, I believe, 180 agents coming on in South Africa, two or 300 in Mexico uh, as these companies open up. And so literally as they sell home in Johannesburg or different provinces of Canada for you Canadian agents throughout different states in the United States, you get paid on home sales worldwide. It's a global opportunity. Real estate has always been a global opportunity. If you're Remax, if you're Cobalt Banker, if you're Keller Williams, they've gone global. The agents, the agents don't make money on home sales in Brazil or Korea or Japan or China or anywhere throughout Europe. But EXP, we do. You do. Check it out. Keep learning. Bottom line, join the company everyone's talking about. I know Real Trends just named EXP the Amazon of real estate. And we are growing like Amazon grew. It is amazing. Most exciting thing I've ever been a part of in my life. Probably the best business decision I've ever made in my life. Literally, I mean, you couldn't even compare it times 40. It's just been that big of a deal. So here's the final slide here. One, 
almost the final slide. It's a summary slide, really important. In fact, if you have your camera, take it out and take a picture of this slide. We have no desk fees, no royalty fees, and no franchise fees. I pay desk fees, royalty fees, and franchise fees to Remax and Keller Williams for 20 years, where I was a top, top star agent, been on stages, the whole thing, uh, have all the plaques. Uh, they switched to glass because they look nicer, but they didn't appreciate my stock awards at, at EXP doubled, tripled, quadrupled. And today it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in income. I'm so glad. I And we obviously give out plaques and a nice glass uh, awards too, but we, we actually give you a piece of this company. It was built to be a rising tide. A rising tide rises all ships, not just the, the owner of that franchise system. But everybody, I cannot even tell you how many people are, are massively benefiting from EXP. So you get the commission. It's an 80-20 split. Um, it's not the highest split. There's companies that do 90-10, 95-5. And, and, and the cap is 16000 a year. I'm sure you can find companies that well, I'm only paying 5 or 8 or 10. But remember, you get what you pay for. Uh, do you have any uh, shares of stock? Do you have any ownership? No. Most people like... I think I'm not even aware of anyone who does that. No. Are you, and if you do, is it publicly traded or a penny stock? We were a penny stock and now we're on the NASDAQ. Now we're publicly traded. And, and it's just, it's amazing. We, we've reached net, net profitability quarter after quarter after quarter. Uh, profits in our second quarter were over $8 million just for the quarter. Net income profit, $8 million, which is why the stock is just going for a ride. It's crazy. Now, past performance is no indication of future performance. Want to make the SEC happy? Who knows where it's going to go? I took my chances. Couldn't be more happy that I did it. Once you cap, you go to a 100% split. We have agents that sell eight to 10 homes in two, three, four months, and they're at 100% for the rest of the year. And then they're winning all these stock awards, referring agents. It's pretty cool. And it's an organic thing. It just happens. I don't care where you are, what Century 21, uh, Remax, Cobalt Banker, whatever company you're at, Berkshire Hathaway. If you're happy, people will ask you, how's it going? Do you like it there? Do you think I could talk to your sales manager? Sure. It's an organic thing. It's going to happen at all companies. Just the EXP, listen to me. We compensate you for it. I don't think it's a bad thing. You make a referral to somebody in Phoenix or Las Vegas or Dallas and they list a home, you're going to be compensated by way of a 25% referral fee. We think the value is in the agent. We pay a lot more for it because the agent produces sales every month, every year for decades. I've been doing this for decades. There's a lot of people who do this 30 and 40 years. I know Rick Jiha, who's hosted today's event, has done this for over 40 years. He looks like a 28-year-old, but he's been doing it for four decades. So it's pretty cool what's going on. Standard cost, it's $149 to start up. You know, it's not a capital risk. This is not a franchise. There's no franchise to buy. We're a national and international real estate company. So it's 149 bucks. So it's more of an ego risk. I just said I'd try EXP for six months. If it didn't work, I was going back to Keller Williams or back to Remax or maybe go independent. But I was perfectly okay with failure. Didn't want to fail, never want to fail, but I've always succeeded at a high level because I'm willing to fail. Um, I, I took a calculus risk. I got think it's going to work. I wouldn't have tried it, but I didn't think it would work. Did I know it would work? No. I go, I'll give EXP six months and I, I know this, I'm going to work. We'll see if EXP works. And I worked hard. And six months later, I think I was making $25,000 a month in revenue share, which was like, holy smokes. And then it just exploded from there. Um, it's, it's, it's a big, big number today. So standard cost, we have a $50 a month tech fee that gives you Sky Slope, Breakthrough Broker, Regis Corporate Suite Membership, and KB Core. All four things for 50 bucks. For 35 a month, you get an EXP University fee. It's our educational fee, 35 a month. So the overhead of an EXP agent is 85 bucks a month. Now in, um, in Canada, it's, these numbers are different by 5, 10, 20 bucks in Canada. So you have to get the Canadian numbers. I'm here in the US. I'm giving you US numbers. Very, very similar. Also, we have a $25 per transaction broker review fee. That's how we compensate our brokers as their workload grows. They keep getting a paid more and more. So our EXP brokers are very happy. Finally, we do charge $40 per file for 
errors and omissions for insurance in case the deal goes south, which I've never needed in 24 years. I've never needed my Eno with 4,000 transactions, not a single lawsuit, which means when I mess up, I pay for it. It's not that I've been perfect and never made a mistake, but I step up and own it. The buck stops here, the old Teddy Roosevelt quote. So, and you know, we only, we cap it at 500 a year. You'll never pay more than $500 a year. By the way, this includes commercial. The split for you commercial agents is 80-20. The cap is 16,000, unheard of. Then you go to 100% and uh, Eno's 500 bucks a year. For those of you that are brokers and independent agents and work for independent uh, companies, if you have 30, 60, 90, 190, 4, 500, we've had uh, independents with those kind of numbers up to 900 fold into eXp, jump on our platform. They still get the brand. If you're Platinum Real Estate of Las Vegas, you can be Platinum Real Estate in Las Vegas at the bottom brokered by eXp, which means you still have your brand, but here's the deal. You are not liable. eXp is the broker of record. They're liable. So it's called loss mitigation. You can put your fanny on the line for 190 agents or 670 agents, or you can allow eXp to take that liability. They've got deep pockets and a nice big legal department to handle the situations like any big company. Bottom line, we're we're experiencing explosive growth. I personally, just me, I'm adding 500 agents a month, not a year, a month. Those are like large mega offices that take 20 years to build. I have that join me at my organization every month. I remember when it was one a month or one a week and then 10 a month, which is 120 a year, then 20 a month, which is 240 a year, then 30 a month, one a day, 360 a year. Now it's 500 a month. You need to dig deep, ask questions, find out about this company. Today, it was so exciting a year and a half ago when we opened the NASDAQ, we got to hit the closing bill. We're trading on the big boards with Apple, Cisco, Intel, Amazon. It's amazing. Learn about eXp. Finally, our annual conventions this November 9th, 10th, and 11th. It's supposed to be in Las Vegas. I believe it's going to turn into a virtual event because of COVID-19. Really, everyone thinks we're geniuses now. They used to kind of make fun of us. I made fun of Netflix. I made fun of Uber. I made fun of Airbnb. Uh, People made fun of Amazon. Amazon will never make it. Who's having the last laugh now? So we're not laughing at anybody, but we want you to join us. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Get back to the person who you know at eXp, a friend of yours, and say, we need to have a discussion. I need to know more about eXp. I want to know how it works and get the facts. Do not listen to your franchise owner, your sales manager, because it's like, um, you work for Ford and you go, what do you think about Chevy? What do you expect them to say? Chevy's such a better truck. <laughs> just just go. No, but you know, Ford's great. Or maybe you work at Chevy and you're thinking about going to Ford. Hey, what do you think about Ford? Do you expect, yeah, there's such a, but just go to Ford. No, they're going to say Chevy's way better than Ford. And Ford's going to say, no way. Ford's a much better truck than Chevy. Here's why. I mean, it's just how it works, right? You guys with me? So it's a fair thing. So get the facts to your, for yourself. Because you're being, you're, you're, get, you're missing the boat because you've been listening to people that have a vested interest in where they're at and they don't want you to leave. Take it as a compliment, okay? So what's my final thought for you? Bottom line, forget EXP, forget everything. You want to make it. You want to be successful in life. Um, I, I love some of these wonderful quotes, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, let's go together. I know Seneca has a quote. He says this, first, they are impossible then it is difficult, then it is done. And so the world's changing. You got to dig deep. I want to say this. Some of you are going through struggles right now, maybe in your marriage, in your real estate practice. You used to do open houses. You're struggling with real estate. I can't get leads. Listen to me. Uh, If you read the Bible, it says this too shall pass. Every famine, every war, everything that ever happened. What's it say? It says this too shall pass. And it always does. After the storm, after the hurricane is the rainbows. They start showing up. Hey, you're going to get through this. Um, Another one of my favorite quotes is this. It's not the force of the gale, but the set of your sail that determines your direction in life. Some of you right now are experiencing a category five hurricane in your life. You're struggling. You don't know how you're going to make your car payment. You're behind on your house payment, maybe your rent, and you're in panic mode. Listen to me. It's not the force of the gale, but the set of your sail. You can actually take that stuff. Maybe you're experiencing cancer. Maybe you're going through marriage trauma or you have something going on with one of your teenage son or daughter and you're really going through it. Listen to me. 
You can, you can set your sail. You can surround yourself with people who care about you. You can come up with a plan and you can execute on a daily basis and you can overcome. I've been there. I remember when I had a financial need, I said, I've had enough. And big star agents at my office, Remax, were selling six and seven homes a year. Do the math on that. It's like 70, 80 homes a year. They were the superstars. Of course, the big teams sell more, but what do you really make in the end, right? And I, and I had everything I had fell out of escrow. I had nothing in escrow. It was middle of summer. So I set a goal to sell 30 homes in 30 days. Most people want to sell 30 homes in a year. It was just me. I didn't have a team. And I, I, I set this BHAG. It's called a big, hairy, audacious goal. I said, I'm going to sell 30 homes in 30 days. I'm not going to be like everyone else. Now, the goal made me go, oh, my gosh, how am I going to do that? All of a sudden, I went from being kind of what Zig Ziglar calls a wandering generality to a meaningful specific. And I set the goal to sell to show property every day before I, yeah, I'm going to try to show some property this week, maybe do an up the house show, show property to two or three buyers this weekend. There was no sense of urgency. There was no focus. I was just, yeah, I'm going to work on this, work on that. Man, I hope they don't buy new construction. I might lose it. And all of a sudden, man, I just show property every day. And I also, when I changed the goal, it became focused. I said, I'm showing property every day to somebody. Someone somewhere is going to see at least one house. And I worked so hard to hit that goal. Some days I started showing two, three, four buyers property a day. 30 days later, I did not hit the goal. I told everyone, you watch, I'm selling 30 homes, 30 days. Now my record part of this was six sales in a month, which isn't bad. How many of you would be excited if you sold six homes in the last 30 days? That month, I blew the record. I didn't make it. I failed terribly. I did not sell 30 homes straight up. I only sold 14. I literally sold almost two and a half times my record because I quit comparing myself to everyone else who says, wow, you have four at home at escrow. Good job. Pat on the back. You have five in escrow. Whoa, six. You got paid six times this month. You average commission checks like 10 grand. You mean 60 grand in a month. Wow. You know what happened? I said, forget all that. I'm, I'm capable of more. Listen to me. You are capable of more. Henry Ford says this. If you think you can, you can. Maybe you can. If you think you can, maybe you're right. In other words, um, he also said a man or a woman's about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Make a decision to, to be full of life, full of energy, to focus on your dreams. Work harder than anybody else, but work smart and set big goals that inspire you. And guess what? You'll never be the same. And what, then once I sold those 14 homes in a month, selling six homes a month was like shooting ducks in a barrel, right? Shooting fish in a barrel, whatever the saying is. So I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your future. I'm preaching to the choir. You're the one who was here at the Back to School Real Estate Expo. So dig deep, learn, be open. Again, best business decision I ever made. Go, prosper, do well, and we'll see you out there. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much, Brent Gove. That was an incredible presentation, informational, and while we wanted it to be informational, it also turned out to be educational. Now, for all of us watching today, I got to tell you that that last part we can we can take in and decide, is this something we needed to know about and how it will change our decisions going forward. For the rest of the day, with all of that amazing education that we got from such incredible speakers from all over, I want to make sure that you understand that whoever set you up with a registration link and got you registered for this can supply you a lot more information and also let us all know about the re possible recording of today so that you can watch it over and over again and learn to be masters in the area that you're most looking to be perfected in. So I got to tell you, overall today, I am so impressed, so excited, and so ready to go on and take myself on in my business with the information that I now have. So again, reach out to the person who helped you get registered and they will help you find out any more information you need from anything that happened today. Take care and remember, thank you so much for joining us at the 19, excuse me, the 2020 Real Estate Back to School Expo. Take care now. <music>